welcome everyone to the uh, February 13th meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Um, so at this time we'd like to open it up to anyone in the audience, in the crowd, who would like to speak regarding any topic, issue at all about planning in Northampton um, that is not on the agenda. Kind of a public comment period. Most of you are here either to observe or to speak specifically about agenda items. So. So we'll move right on to our first agenda item, which is a site plan by Monarch Enterprises to create more than six parking spaces and parking in a residential district for commercial uses at 3 Wright Avenue, 118 Con Street, map ID 39A-19 and 20. And it looks like the applicant has a presentation. Uh, Edward Etheridge of Northampton. Uh, I just want to note that the application was filed by the management company, and the application applicant is really the property owner, which is listed in the deed reference there, which is Gretna Green Court, Development Court. So you, you have the name, it's just that in the notice it listed the management company. <clears throat> and with me tonight is Paul Marcelina from the management company, the manager of the project. Leslie Laurie, who's the Director of Patient Services at NETA, and uh, Chris Carney, who's the architect from Leves, who will make the presentation. And uh, I wanted to just point out the difference. This is an application for a vacant lot, an uh, undeveloped lot, that's right in back of NETA. Um, Gretna Green has purchased the lot. They own the lot in front, so they'll merge and become one lot so that they can put in some additional spaces. So we'd like to start with Leslie just telling you a little about what their plans are. Although plans for a parking lot aren't too exciting, um, parking is an issue down there, so you'll be happy to hear they hope to make some more. But Leslie will speak for a minute, and then Chris Carney will present the project. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Leslie Tarlori, and I am both the Director of Patient Services but also the Western Regional Director for NETA, uh, which is located on Conn Street um, in Northampton. Prior to that, I was the CEO of Tapestry Health for 40 years, so I feel like I've spent half of my life or more in Northampton and um, really um, have appreciated both working downtown and also now working, in a sense, at the gateway to Northampton. Um, what NETA um, has done is tried to be a good neighbor, and part of that um, has been um, both paying for a police detail so that we could let our um, customers and patients know that if they were medical patients that we encourage them to use our parking lot, and if not, we've purchased spaces at the Gazette on a daily basis, and another lot behind us, which we call DPH, but it's actually a lot that Jad Fortier um, owns, um, so people could be directed there. In addition to that, we've put signs up encouraging only residents to park on Wright Street, um, but with the number of individuals who are using um, our facility, we really wanted to maximize um, the number of parking spaces that we have. And so uh, the individual who has purchased the house um, sold the lot separately, and we were really delighted when the owner of our building purchased that lot. And then uh, we were just looking again at the final look of what the parking lot will look like. And I think it will look um, much nicer than it currently does. Um, there are going to be trees and shrubs um, and not just a kind of wilder look to the lot. I also think that uh, we, again, have tried to be really good neighbors on Wright Street, and I think anything that we can do to um, actually have formal parking spaces on Wright Street, I think will do us all good. So um, we couldn't support this uh, proposal um, any more enthusiastically than I'm saying now. So thanks. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Christopher Carney. I work as a civil engineer and land surveyor at Art Lubeck Associates, and I'm here to present a uh, site plan application for a parking lot expansion at 3 Wright Avenue. 
Uh, the parcel is uh, directly abuts the current net of facility. Uh, and that's near the roundabout at exit 18. I think we're all probably familiar with the location of the project. Uh, the parcel of land uh, for the proposed redevelopment is 0.14 acres. It's a fairly small uh, site, and it's relatively flat. It's in an urban area, so there's not much uh, terrain to navigate. So uh, this sheet would be the demolitions and removal plan, and this shows some of the areas of existing paving that would be uh, removed in order to create an area that will uh, support the 13 proposed parking spaces. So this would be the uh, redeveloped area. This is, as, as mentioned before, a combination of two parcels. So the parcel to the uh, right, screen right, uh, I guess the eastern side of the property uh, would be paved, and the western parcel, would, a, a lot of the existing pavement would be turned into a lawn area. I'm going to head back to the existing conditions. Uh, part of it, uh, something to mention here is that this uh, parcel, Free Right Ave, was the site of a single family home about 15 years ago. Uh, that home was raised, I think, yes, about 15 years ago, and so there was uh, a, a bit of an impervious area existing in that, so that was taken into consideration during our stormwater calculations. Uh, the, the grading of the site, like, like we, I mentioned before, is pretty flat, so we're proposing uh, that stormwater generally flows from this, I'll call it the western side of the site, and flows over the surface of the pavement, and then is collected in what we're calling a sediment four bay right here. Uh, so there'd be no catch basins associated with this project. Uh, Stormwater flows into, into this low area and, uh, on the western side, eastern side of the property. And then we're proposing a yard drain. It looks like a small catch basin, sticking about half a foot out of the ground. And so as the sediment area fills up, stormwater would cascade into this uh, yard drain and then flow into a subsurface system right here. It's a pretty small uh, system. And so that both of those areas could be used as potential infiltration sites where stormwater can move into the groundwater. That way it doesn't head into the city infrastructure and convert into city infrastructure with stormwater. Uh, also, the sediment forebay would act as a water quality unit. So uh, sediment would settle to the bottom of this ponding area and only cleaner water would uh, flow into the top of the basin and into the underground basin here. And that's pretty important to keep sediment out of stormwater in order to have a long life expectancy for the uh, stormwater system. After it flows into that system, it, it would enter an outlet control structure and then head through uh, a pipe to an existing manhole in Wright Avenue. Um, Post-condition flow rates have been reduced by this. So pre-development flow rates were determined, and, and then we model those against this development and size the system so that less storm water enters the Northampton infrastructure after the project. Uh, this plan has been reviewed by Northampton Engineering Department. Uh, we've uh, got a letter or some comments today, and uh, they're mostly construction related, and we have no problem conforming to all comments that were made. So I think that's really going to wrap up my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Board members, any <coughs> questions before we turn it over to the public? Is there any way of people backing out of the parking area? I mean, if they drive in and can't find a spot, what do they do? Oh, yeah, if they, if they drive in and the, the lot was fully occupied, then they would have to back out or wait for a, a vehicle to leave so they can take that parking space. Okay, so, and then they, they wait on the street until some space, so there they go. Well, yeah, as mentioned before, there's another parking area to the uh, eastern side, southeastern side, the main net of parking area, as well as other parking nets available at uh, other areas. So <coughs> this is for customers. For yeah. no, this, uh, Can I just speak to that? Um, currently, what we do is, in addition to rent spaces um, for our customers and patients, we also rent spaces uh, from the hotel for our current staff. 
and what these um, spaces are for, or we don't see these as a parking lot where people would be coming and going. These are really more for the staff, and it's to, again, kind of limit the number of spaces that we're using in the area. Would there be signage to that effect? What, we have signage right now, and yeah, that is what we would expect. We also do have um, a police detail that um, basically helps individuals know where to go, and even after the police detail, we expect that we'll have our own parking individuals who will do the same thing. So if it's for staff, then presumably when you open, your employees show up, they'll grab the closest parking spaces, and they'll, it'll be full for the rest of the day. Um, what where it won't be first come first serve, what we'll be doing is using these parking spaces for uh, different individuals. And Alan has a, um, a building which is very close to where we are. And so I think he can also speak about um, just what we've done in terms of the neighborhood to ensure that people who want to go to a therapist or a lawyer are um, going to why they're in a parking lot versus coming for medical marijuana um, and using their parking spaces. I think we've been really quite um, careful about both signage and also having personnel that are directing people. You have been good neighbors. By the way, I, I as I mentioned, I'll have to recuse myself from voting. Oh, so I had forgotten Thank about that, so you should probably just step off and not be part of the right. conversation. Okay. Right. Can you explain what you mean? I'll take back whatever I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I find this a lot, I mean, the drawings are very clear as to like where the yeah. painting and stormwater goes. It's totally unclear how this relates to your other parking. Like, there's no drawing that shows the parking that you have now and how it relates to the circle. And um, so, as I understand what you're saying, you rent spaces now from a parking lot that exists, but you don't want to pay for the parking rental, so you don't want to build your own parking lot? Actually, these spaces we rent just from the hotel yeah, right. alone, like over 50 spaces during the day. Right. So these are just to take some pressure off of that. Uh -huh. um, this is behind the building, not close to where the rotary is. Sure. So you're still going to rent spaces from the hotel after yes. this is built? Just yes. less spaces? Correct. I can speak to the location in relation to Netta, if you'd like me. I'm not driven around and seeing, I'm just saying in the application. Oh. Like, I know where it is. Yeah. It's not super clear. Like, if that, what you've explained here makes sense, but it wasn't clear in the application. And I guess what we um, anticipate, too, is that now, um, um, you know, we're glad for the, you know, many hundreds and hundreds of people that, you know, use um, our facility every day. Um, but as there are more and more places that are open, we expect that, that you know, again, we expect to want to continue to be the premier um, place, but there will be less traffic. So, you know, if we were to talk to each other in 10 years, it could be that that would be sufficient. But the goal is for us to try to have as much of our own park as we can. So, sorry, why, why is that? Um, one of the kind of key features of our relationship with the city has been to try to be a good business partner and also a good neighbor um, in an area where it's, even though it's residential, it's also commercial. And so we've tried very, very hard to do that. And because of the number of staff that we have, the more, the more spaces that we can have, which are part of the rental of our building, the better for us as a sustainable building. <coughs> can you explain we also why, is that, have, why is it better? How is it better for you to have spaces, more parking spaces? Like why not use what the it parking does is it, What it does is it affords um, both um, our staff to have, um, I mean, it's more convenient for our staff, but in addition to that, what we're trying to do is to have as little on-site, non-on-site parking that we can. So the more spaces that we can have that we're accommodating our staff and our patients and customers, the better. And so what we're doing is we have a long-term lease 
in this space. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking not only to now, but also for the future. And I would expect that if you were uh, wanting to be both a staff person and a customer, one of the things that you look for is how convenient is something versus having something sent by Amazon. Mm. So as I understand it, this, this new parking lot will be marked employee only. Correct. Basically, the employees then go right into an employee entrance. Correct. Um, if a customer was to come around that side, they'll see a sign that says employee only, so they won't attempt to pull in probably. Um, currently, at that small parking lot in the back, that's marked employees only too, um, and somebody keeps an eye on that. Correct. So there won't be the intermingling of really customers on to this new parking space, Correct. this parking area. And there is security, which is on the back of the building, so if someone was going to unintentionally come in and not read a sign, um, someone would greet them and ask them to leave. Other questions? Um, so let me, I did want to mention one thing, George, which I don't think was mentioned. Um, is part of the design project, Chris didn't mention it, the, the a driveway parking that enters right near the intersection of Town Street. And as part of the compliance with the ordinance, the driveway has been moved over so it meets the 50 feet away. So that's a significant safety uh, improvement that's been made to the site already. I'd like to show you elevations, but it's a parking. Tell us about the two dumpsters that are currently there. What's the uh, future of those? The two dumpsters that are existing in this area? Correct. It's going to be a low-owned area now. Probably originally it was stipulated that both dumpsters would be in this enclosure in the chain link fence. And now there's only room for one. The industry is going into big containers. We see that all across our community. But uh, so you don't have to answer that now. But later on, we'll want to make sure that you have plans for those. Dumpsters. I just want to say that we do have pedal people um, who pick up quite a bit of our garbage in addition to having a dumpster too. That's great, but you still have two dumpsters that are unsightly in that part of our town, so we want to make sure that they're enclosed and behind some kind of area. That makes a lot of sense to make enclosing those dumpsters okay. part of any, any sort of condition. So that'll be more impervious area, because right now that's all proposed to be loaned and seeded. Is that the chain link fence currently? That's the, uh, the little square there that says um, existing fine, uh, no, there's a vinyl stockade fence that runs the, the length of the, the lot that I guess is going to be moved over to next to the abutters. But there's another chain link fence within that area that is the, the macadam that's to be torn up. That currently hides one dumpster. It's not really detailed here. <clears throat> so I believe this dumpster area to the north of the building, which I think I'm hovering over. It, it was to be, uh, it was considered impervious area during stormwater modeling, but since it's not really part of this project, it, it's not shown in the bold line. But it is part of the project if all of that impervious area is coming up and going to be reseeded and grass, right? So you have to do something with those dumpsters. I doubt you're going to go all the time. Great, but yeah. Which? Mm -hmm. So it's showing the removal of the dumpsters, not showing the dumpsters are going anywhere in the new And where do you see that, David? Where's it so removal of the dumpsters? No, I'm, we're implying that. Removal. Oh, we're implying that. The six-foot yeah. six fence is enclosing dumpsters. Yeah. So the trash will go indoors now, or unclear, unknown at this point? 
back of the cars of the police contingent. <laughs> Can you talk a little more about the police contingent? I think it's like a horrible thing for our city that like this great new circle that we have, it's like a gateway for most people coming in, and then we have this insanity of, of cones and cops that come in at 2 in the morning. It's just, yeah. Like, what's, what's, the, what's the plan? Is this relevant to us talking about this? I'm happy to talk about it. I don't know. Like, yeah. I, don't, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's hold off a little bit on that. Let's get some more details just about the site plan itself. And then I know there are some things about the parking adjacent to the building sure. that we want to talk about. Um, let's, I, I just want to stay for a minute and make sure we're at our Great. There's also some tree plantings that are... Uh, there's four acer root worms proposed as part of this plan, as well as a mulch bed that would be retained and replanted. Uh, as far as the, the number of parking spaces, I think that when you know this was a new use for a building and, and really a, the first type of use, so the number of parking spaces that NETA had wasn't sufficient for the demand. So that I think I'm trying to answer some of the questions as to why uh, these parking spaces are needed. I think we've mentioned in 10 years this may be a fully functional site with no additional parking required off-site, uh, but right now there would be some leasing still required, but as more facilities open up in the area, I think the, the all in all, the goal is that this site will be self-contained and, you know, looking forward to about 10 years more places open up that no more parking would be required off-site, yet at the same time, it, this won't be an abundance of parking for this use. Right. 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 I think. Okay. So. Let's go back to the trees for a minute. Okay, great. Um, there are four trees proposed. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me up here where they're planned for? There are currently three trees um, in there, Carolyn, that they're going to take out, I guess. There's um, two big birch trees, big birds, yeah. and then there's three current trees in a little curve of Con Street. I think they're ornamental apple or cherry. They're coming out, I, I uh, yes. suppose, I, yeah. but they don't meet. I don't think they're 18 inches in width, which is, I think, it's a requirement for a tree replacement. Right. The, uh, so there's a, there's a tree replacement formula for trees taken out that are over 20 inches, but there's no <coughs> tree planting required site plan. Yes, exactly. So I think that's what we're trying to meet with these four proposed <laughs> trees. And these four trees are going to be planted outside of the tree belt on the, the applicant's property, it looks like. Yeah, there's not much of a tree belt available on Wright Avenue. It's pretty narrow right, right away for the size of the street, so they would be on private property, but in the tree belt. Yep. Okay. Um, did you propose or see the need for any lighting at all for the parking lot? Uh, I no, no illumination plan was developed for this property, or for this project. And so I went, I went by there tonight, and there's a huge pole in the liquor store across the way with a huge sodium light that seems to cast some light onto this parking lot. Um, there's only, they only have wall packs on their building. So if you're employed, it says wall packs will be provided. Blue wall packs? I see four, yeah. That's a note. Lighting around. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the very last one, George. Yep. <clears throat> so they're, yeah, they're currently on the building, I guess. So we don't need a lighting plan, per se, right? Um, they need to meet the stand, you know, match for a five foot candle. But they don't need to show it to us. Um, if, if there are no lights proposed for the site, um, I mean, typically you do see lighting that's on the outside of the building because that's also per, um, presented as a way to um, project illumination yep. around the exterior of the building. Um, but um, unless they're asking for a waiver from the maximum allowed in the zoning, then um, you can probably, you'll probably be okay with just making sure they meet the standards in it. I mean, they're going to have to present that at the building permit level, showing that they're meeting the light levels, um, and they're not asking for any difference in that. So you um, could approve the plans without the light. Nope. Were there? Uh, you got a chance, Carolyn, to see the comments from DPW? Is there anything I that we do. Said, right, um, 
Yep. Um, so um, there are a lot of details about um, um, size of pipes and um, the um, required crushed stone for the trenches for the infiltration basins. Um, the biggest issue really was um, regarding the uh, fact that there's a five-year moratorium on Wright Avenue because it was just built, so they're going to have to meet those standards. So that doesn't need to be a condition because that's just a city um, regulation that if you cut into a street um, right after it's paved, you need to um, pave much, you can't just patch it, you have to actually um, um, pave or repave beyond the extent of the work so gotcha. that you don't create, you know, a weak point in the, in the street. Um, and um, I think that was, um, there are, um, you know, details they want to see construction plans prior, 15 days prior to request for a building permit that has, incorporates all the standards that they would require for um, the pipes and this um, stormwater system. Um, and then uh, they also would like to see, a they want before issuance of the building permit, a, um, um, an executed stormwater operation and maintenance and inspection plan for the system they're proposing. That's pretty standard. But because they're not getting a separate stormwater permit because of the size of this project, um, DPW just reviews for stormwater, but, but the system requires maintenance, so they want to make sure it does get maintained. And, and the storm, recording a stormwater maintenance and operations plan um, helps facilitate that that stays with the property you know, in perpetuity, essentially. Um, so, um, and then the only other thing related to construction is um, they would like to, any um, curbing that's not reused, grant curbing, they would like return to DPW um, after construction. And that they need to put an um, anti-tracking apron during construction to prevent um, erosion or um, sediments from coming off the site. Um, and that's, that's basically it. That's a, condensed version of all the little details about the um, utility connections. Uh, so the parking is just for employees because it says on the staff report new lots should be available for customers and not just employees. So is that my guess? Well, so my recommendation was that it be open, but you just heard at the beginning their rationale for wanting to have um, employee only and that they're keeping the parking um, lease arrangements. So that's, uh, you know, without having clarity about exactly how, what their plan was, originally I, would recommend, I recommended that you think about that. Um, so it's really up to you to make, you know, determine whether that makes sense. It sounds like it would be full. I think the concern would be if it wasn't full, then you'd be left with, you know, employee-only parking with spaces available. The other issue related to parking, I think, is that there's still on-street parking spaces available, but they've been blocked off by this police detail and all the cones. And it makes sense that if there is an issue, we should be using all the infrastructure in the right-of-way that is available for parking. So the on-street um, parking, I think, should be tied, you know, reopening that, I think, should also be tied to this permit. Um, uh, because that allows more opportunities for people to park. How many employees are on site on a daily basis? A hundred. Not all at one time. No, not at the same Oh, I'm sorry, at the same time. Uh, yeah, on average, uh, on a given shift or how about you forty. Arrange? About 40. Okay. So 13 parking spaces. 40 people is 13. Parking spaces? There's 13 in the plane, you said. 13 employee parking spaces. Right. in the rear of the building that could be used for employees. Hey, wouldn't, wouldn't the cones up there? I don't think oh. you can say Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, that's true. Uh, so, <laughs> just a question about, hey, if we, because we're, if we say yes to this and we say it's employee parking only, what does that mean relative, like, so we had a leaves? 
What does that mean relative to the next people who use it? Um, I mean, it's a parking lot. I mean, yeah. I, mean I, 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 yeah. you know, only the, the next only employees. <laughs> right. The next business decides whether they want it open for resident for their own. But, but that's what I'm saying. Is you have to. Does us saying employees only limit it for whatever future no. future use? No, I mean okay, you, I you know you're not you're accepting the plan that their plan is to have it signed for employees only. Okay. Your review is only for the creation of the parking lot. Okay. So it wouldn't necessarily be a mandate that the next user would also only be okay. able to use it. So um, I think pretty soon we'll move on to the public to make sure that the only other item that we're aware of that needs to be addressed is some provisions for bicycles. It's great to hear that um, maybe not all of your employees are riding single occupancy cars into to work, so maybe they'll be... Can I say so. something to that? Um, one of the things that I was really proud of that NETA did was it was the first um, business to actually be the sponsors of three of the bike share that we have in the city. And because of regulations related to our advertising, we're not allowed to put anything saying that. But that was a real commitment that we had. In addition to that, what the um, Gazette and Hotel have just done is to accept from the city the ability to put a bike station there. So I think that will also facilitate even more of our employees being able to use the bikes before the closest one was where Union Station is. Great. So, yeah, we're very much looking forward to that, Great. too. Um, and we'll, we'll still want to see on the finished plans a couple of bike except stops right there. At the yeah, we do have bike racks, too. Out front in the other for the... Uh, yeah, it's kind of an anomalous project because they already exist there. Yeah. But when they got their special permit for their original project, they have bike racks in the front of the building. Okay. And I'm assuming there's handicapped parking in front of the building as well? Correct. Right. There's not handicapped parking incorporated into this little parking lot. And, and, and is there... Handicapped employees park where? In, in the front lot? I'm sorry. If you have a handicapped employee, yes, that's correct. they park in the front lot. So and will there be egress, uh, a flow between the two parking lots? Uh, so you can see the existing sidewalk that leaves the building over here. Yep. You know, so they, they are very close in proximity. How many spots do you have? I don't think that's really part of this submission. Well, I think the zone will require a certain amount of parking per retail use or office use. What does the zone require? Um, in the general business district for the reuse of a building. So it was previously a medical office building. Um, in general business district, we do not require recalculation for parking spaces based on a change of use. Okay. Right. Um, so um, it's whatever the medical building had before, which was less than what they're proposing now with this new 13 space. I think it was approximately 30, but I don't remember. I mean, typically the for for retail, it's um, one space per 300 square feet. But again, if it, it's um, you essentially, whatever's there in existence for that use um, is allowed to continue for any other change. Sure. I mean, there's a maximum anyway. Yeah, that's right. So if there are no more technical questions at this point, we'll open up and we'll come back to some more general ones about, I think, what you read before. I think we can do that because we can so, is there anyone in the uh, from the public who would like to speak for in favor of this, or has any comments at all about this project? Um, has the applicant talked to the abutter right next door? Yes. I'm, I'm sure it's. A, I think it's a rental unit. Rental units now. It's not a single family home. Correct. The person who purchased the house turned it into two rental units, and I've been in touch with him, and he's, um, he understands what um, the idea for the lot was. And he had an opportunity if he wanted to to purchase yeah. it. He didn't want it. And um, he, he, I mean, we've talked about um, both the use, and he just wanted to be certain that part of our fence 
would still be um, where he wanted it to be. So the answer was yes. So he's happy with where we're moving with this project. So the current vinyl fence is going to be moved eastward to the abutters line right there to provide that kind of. You no know, plantings are proposed at this point, just the fence as a buffer for yeah. that houses. Um, the current residents of those houses have taken advantage of that empty lot. I would have done the same thing. They have a, play, a little playground there for kids. They also have some young fruit trees that they planted. So I, I would encourage you to work with them to move all of those things before construction. Yeah, um, it was the former owners who did all of that. They had a small uh, child. Uh-huh. And, okay. yeah. Okay, great. I don't think we can really go beyond that if we think the fence is enough to protect that house from the lights of the cars at night. And it's a, I believe a six-foot stockade fence. So, <coughs> vinyl. So it would shield. I know two own my own property. So there are no other plantings uh, in that grassy area by the abutters. It's all just to be grass. Yeah, so it's, it's part of the stormwater feature, and, and at, at one point we were thinking about making it a bioretention area, which would allow for plantings, but <clears throat> for water quality purposes and for uh, uh, some stormwater purposes, it was called the sediment four bay mm -hmm. so uh, the area really could be planted we're not taking any infiltration credit in that area so um okay. there, there would be a potential for future plantings there long story short all right so if there are no more real technical questions we can spend a minute on just the issue of the general traffic um and i, I appreciate that you think we're going up far afield from the parking lot, but it is a site plan, so we get to look how, how it impacts the neighborhood and all. Um, and I think what the staff brought up, and we all agree on, is that the parking on Con Street that is currently cordoned off on that curb there, right opposite the Gazette building, should perhaps be opened up now. And I, I believe the police chief didn't have any issues with that. No, and neither no. does DPW. Mm -hmm. Why is it blocked off now? Oh, who blocked off? I would have. Can I speak to that? Sure. Um, what, uh, the reason that it was blocked off was um, partially um, because of safety. That when people were parking there, there were many people who were trying to cross the street. We wanted to have a crosswalk, but that wasn't possible to actually put in. And so part of the concern was whether someone was going to be run over um, on that street. What the police, um, and the police have really modulated the number of detail that we have, and we've been working with them to lower that, but to also make sure that there's a fast flow of cars, in a sense, as the gateway into Northampton. Um, and so there are different times when there's just one police person and other times when there are actually as many as three. And what that does is afford the ability both for cons and also for uh, Pleasant to move. In addition to trying to prioritize the medical patients who are coming in, what the police have done is, um, at our request, is to ask whether someone's a medical patient. If they are, they're able to use that parking lot if not, they're sent to the Gazette, and you know we do have material that people are given in that way. Um, so um, while the <coughs> chief of police is saying that um, she has no issue with this, um, I think what we've attempted to do is to try to limit the detail. You know, for us too, we're paying for it, so we would prefer not to do that. But we also want to be certain that we're not going to be in a position where the issues of traffic flow um, or also people parking in the wrong places occurs and the police have really been extremely helpful with that. We've also had quite a number of situations where what the police have done is actually help with, it's actually medical patients, some who have you know, fainted and have needed ambulance. So people who are parking at the hotel or at the Gazette, where are they crossing in order to get to your 
Where's the existing crosswalk there? There is none. No. Anywhere on that? There's one up by the, the apartment building? Is that yeah. the closest yeah. one? Yeah. 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 Cross yeah. Right. Well, that's what I was trying to clarify. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying medical patients are directed to park in the lot, and then other non-medical are directed to park across the street? Or is that only when it's full? No, well, well, I mean, basically, um, medical patients are asked to park in that parking lot, and adult use patients are, you know, if it's the first time they've come, they're basically told where to go, and many now know where to go. And if you think about the, um, the Gazette parking lot, um, the part of it which is the north pot, Part of it, all of those spots are ones that we rent. But again, you know, for someone to cross the street, again, we've been, you know, I have to say, I feel like we've been really fortunate that um, there haven't been any incidents. So that's a piece of that. And also with the cones, what it does is it really limits some of the speed and, that people are really using. It really has not only been a gateway to Northampton. It's, you know, it is really. People are happy to drive quickly on both of those streets when they can. Sorry, so, we're going to lower the speeds too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if this parking lot, so if you have this parking lot, are you saying you can or you're willing to or you're not willing to remove cones on con streets so people can park there? Am I hearing that right? We were talking about. I, yeah, I said, uh, yeah, I said so, succinctly it, from the applicant. I guess what, what I feel like is that I. I mean, I would want to um, have a different kind of conversation about having those um, uh, cones no longer there. I would not expect that what people would start to do is to park there. I mean, there are lines on the ground there not really encouraging people to park even without the cones. So it wouldn't necessarily be on cons that I would see. I mean, I would hope that there wouldn't be parking there. I think it's just extremely dangerous. So, so there is. It's been parking there before yeah. Netta opened. It's it's the lines are actually a parking bay, and it's signed parking from here to there. So, um, you know, if you go on Google Street View, you see parked cars um, there before. Yeah, um, and cars parked actually are more effective than cones. I think at slowing traffic um, in, in the vehicle way. So, in the travel way. Um, but I think that, you know, um, it also adds opportunity for people who are coming to Netta to park, and it's on the same side of the street as, as Netta. Um, I don't think we would encourage people to park there at all. Just, again, in terms of safety and people crossing the street. Many more people cross the street there without a crosswalk. Um, so no, just, I again... On the same side of the street? Yeah, to me that's like, yeah, isn't it not crossing the street? I don't quite understand. So what people, what the crosswalk does, what those cones do is, it's almost people walk up to the, that area and then cross the street. Or if they're coming the other way, it's almost like you don't, you're, you're able to cross more quickly. We're not, I'm not saying that's where I'm encouraging people to do it, but people do it. It's the closest way to do it. And there isn't a crosswalk. We've asked for that to happen, but there's, you know, a different process for that. Well, I, I, I would say that we are on the side of the experts in the city, which would be the police department around traffic and parking. And if they had advised, suggested that those concrete spots could be reused again, then we would go with that recommendation. Um, Can I so just ask whether um, Borowski and others who have been dealing with the police detail were consulted or was um, I don't know. I had a conversation with the chief, and um, so she's, I think, pretty well aware of what's, what goes on. Anything else? Um, you know, your point's well taken up. Because of the advent of Meadow, which, is a, which is, has been a bonus to Northampton in very many ways, it has increased the traffic right at this crucial gateway to the city, there's no doubt about it. We are fortunate there haven't been any pedestrian accidents that I'm aware of, considering, especially in the first couple of months when you were the only game in town. Um, but uh, 
that has been pretty well managed so far. Uh, I'm not sure what we can do about having less traffic there or less turning from the road. Well, I think part of the issue is, and I can't remember if you spoke to this, is they're still the only operation in Northampton because the CCC right. hasn't issued final permits to any. I, you all have approved another medical uh, dispensary on the north end of King Street just a couple of months ago. So that's accessible from the interstate as well. That might help relieve some of the customers that are coming to, you know. So it, that's one. There are many retail operations that are in the pipeline that haven't received their final CCC uh, Cannabis Control Commission <coughs> sign-off. Um, so I think part of it is just the fact that this is the only operation in Northampton. Um, and I would think that at some point, when those other ones start coming, then there'll be some real pressure taken off. I mean, I think there'll always be some benefit for NETA to serve you know, people coming up 91 from the south. But uh, nevertheless, there'll be other places in town that people can go to. Reality is there's many municipalities in the state that are also opening. So if you're coming up the highway, there's a hundred other places in the state you can go also that are going to be opening in the next months and years. So. Okie doke. Um, if there are no other. Did we clear up the dumpster issue? I'm not. I don't know where. No, we and on that. we haven't cleared it up yet. I think the applicant realizes they have some right. work to do. <laughs> Those. Yeah, so I, I think we can amend the site plans to make sure our dumpster is uh, still retained on site. I went through some of the stormwater numbers. Uh, it, it won't be a problem to add a little more impervious area. There'd be no change to the subsurface system or any of our designs. Uh, right now, we're reducing stormwater runoff for the two-year storm to almost zero off-site. Uh, the 10-year storm is about a 50% reduction. And the 100-year storm is when we start to get closer to matching pre-condition and post-condition flows. But there's still a, a safety factor and buffer there for us. So the size of the dumpster pad, uh, it, it will still be able to be accommodated by the stormwater so system. So th that's interesting. So it's got to be the size of two dumpsters. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and then it has to have has access by the way smaller. <coughs> so where it's currently positioned they, in that grassy area, it would be tricky. Um, so is this something we can leave to the staff to okay at the next plan or? Well, it kind of depends on the. Um, I think we'd want to know where generally the plan was for these dumpster units um, without um, and just so you know that it's not having an effect on the you know circulation of the yeah. parking lot. Yeah. Um, but then the details of course I think that's fine to assign for staff review. So um, Seems like they could go all the way down at the end of the new driveway um, in between that concrete, four foot concrete walk in the building. Um, on screen here, it's this, this area? Yeah, with the Correct. Yes. Seems to be a very practical location. They would be able to be shielded very easily. There's two doors from the back of the building there. There's the little one that the customers exit. Right. Mm -hmm. this would be the, and then the, the employee entrances where the yeah. FFB is. So this is a little nook that not a lot of trend, not a lot of pedestrian traffic would go through that area. What is that? Is that transformative? Yeah. Generally, or something. So I think the answer would be yes if it's if if the applicant is saying it's going to go there and then the details start to be hammered out on the final plans. That shouldn't be an issue because so long as the board is comfortable with it being an application. Okay. So if we stick it, um, as long as it's, there's room for two dumper, dumpsters and it is enclosed, there's a it's not visible from the street. Um, can I just ask a question what the issue is, of why you want a minimum of two? Why not leave that up to the applicant? Because currently the enclosure that was built for the previous applicant was for one, uh -huh. and now they have two. So I think we have, I think 
their current their current usage is too big dumpster, so I think we have to have a minimum. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, two, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's how many garbage yeah. more. I mean, well, they could maybe become more efficient as well. But if they don't, then one dumpster is going to be out in the parking lot <coughs> like it is now, visible. So. Oh, oh, well, I think what you could say is the dumpster area has to be contained in this space oh. as opposed to saying it you know, has to be in the Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. they might need three in the future. Or one, or yeah, whatever. Or one. Yeah. So, so I don't, unfortunately, I don't know the calculations, the measurements of a big right. dumpster right. from USA now. So, yeah. I can't yeah. say whether that's 12 feet or that's 14 feet. So, so I think that that's why I think you agree or you approve the location of where it should be, mm -hmm. and that's it. And if it starts bleeding into the parking lot, then it's in violation of the site plan. Mm -hmm. So, that it would be up to them to determine then what the capacity of each of those units are and okay. um, what so, they need more. Sounds like net of the requirement is really one dumpster area, so that would be a pretty small area. Well, so what do we do then if six months from now there's another dumpster out in the middle of the parking lot? Then it's not um, compliant with the site plan, so then there would be, we could talk to them and say, hey, you got to be in compliance okay. with the site plan. Because that's currently the situation. Okay. All right. Garbage and recycling is a quickly changing economy right now. Yes, so sure yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Okie doke. Um, so maybe then we need a motion to uh, close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You know the last discussion by the board members on this employee parking lot? Well, parking. That they're going to use for employees. I mean, I guess my, my only concern, and I, I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm for this, I think, but is, and I, and I don't, I don't know, I guess you could just tell me if I'm off base and we don't have any room to have this discussion, but. It just seems like, are we opening up something that says we're, we can put parking lots in residential neighborhoods? So, um... I mean, I understand this is like a mix. It's like a slightly confused look. Well, the, there's an allowance in the zoning for when you create a parking lot serving commercial use or residential districts, and so that's what they're going through now. Okay. Um, so, no, you're not, this is a, a, a... The other piece of it is, the next hearing is about rezoning this parcel to commercial, but nevertheless, it's still in zoning that allows that provision, but only if you come to the planning board. Okay. So that's why you're reviewing this situation as it relates to this corner okay. and the surrounding uses. Okay. So we could approve this even if we don't approve the rezoning, it would still yeah. stand. Yeah. Well, I move to. Uh, I move. <laughs> you move. Okay. Sorry, move the site plan by by Gretna. By Monarch Enterprise. Well, actually, we're going to change that to Gretna um, Green Corporation. Oh, sure. Gretna Green Corporation to create yeah. more than six parking spaces. Spaces and, and uh, parking in a residential district for commercial use at Three Wright Avenue, uh, 118 Con Street, Map ID 39A, 1921. Okay. Is there a second? Move and a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it, right there together. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and that's with the DPW comments and the conditions about the dumpster. DPW comments. And did you did you determine anything about parking at cons by Rex? Um, I think we determined the parking at cons would be opened up now. Parking at cons. The parking at cons would be open. Uh, I thought the I thought the bikes were already taken care of. Yeah, bike racks on the front. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, bike, just bike, just yeah. yeah. Bike racks are. Okay. Uh, the parking will be open up on uh, cons. And um, and everything with the EPW recommended. Okay. 
Okay. All those in favor? And you opposed? Thank you, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I seconded it. I read 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 it. So we have, uh, we're going to go through a number of uh, parcels that we may rezone here, and some of the board members have some financial or other interests in the, in the uh, neighboring parcels, so we just have to be mindful of that as we move through this list. Um, you can take your jump. We're going to wait a second until we can pull up this little neighborhood, this big neighborhood. Are you on item one? Item one under the 720. Context of uh, how this we're going through a number of zoning things. I want to make sure we're clear on when we vote on each one, how we vote on it. We're, we're, we're we are in the process where it goes after we make. We're just making recommendations, I believe, at this point. Right. So, so this is an official public hearing for a zoning amendment. It's a map change, um, and there are a couple. There are actually. I think all the zoning amendments on the public hearing tonight are related to zoning map changes, which means you're um, looking at um, modifying the zoning map that determines what district a parcel is in or several parcels are located in. Um, and all zoning amendments are required to go for a public hearing in front of the planning board and a public hearing in front of city council which they've opted to have City Council Legislative Matters Committee um, oversee. So this um, first um, uh, zoning map amendment is for, um, was um, a petition by the property owner, which is one mechanism for zoning change to take place. Um, many times you see um, zoning amendments that are done by staff department or the mayor's office or a combination. Um, sometimes city council propose um, zoning changes. This one happened to be um, requested by the property owner, which um, is not out of, um, uh, is not inconsistent with where the um, 
long-range plan is going for um, zoning amendments in this area. We've talked for a long time about um, potentially extending the central business district down to the roundabout, um, especially after we've done the, um, you know, we did that first section of Pleasant Street um, improvements with MassWorks money. Um, there's another MassWorks um, grant that's, or Complete Streets grant that's been um, granted to the city for design for the next segment that takes us down to the roundabout. At the same time, we've been working on um, form-based code for central business. And as part of that, looking at different sub-districts within that, so we would treat gateways differently in terms of design features than we do Main Street and Pleasant, that sort of main intersection. So in that context, we've talked about expanding, uh, taking the step of adopting form-based code and also making um, streetscape improvements along Pleasant Street to then um, follow that with an expansion of the commercial district. So um, this, um, even though there was a petition by the property owner, um, is moving forward. We don't feel that it's necessarily out of um, or inconsistent with the long-term goal of looking at how we can expand commercial districts where it makes sense um, surrounding the downtown, core downtown. So I'm just sort of giving, this is the, an overview of the, of the site. You know, you just had the, you just saw the permit on this parcel here. This is um, right avenue. So it's really just about this one piece at this moment in time which doesn't mean that in six months when we finish form-based code, you won't see another proposed amendment that would potentially make this uh, a larger area of potentially central business, but it sort of depends on how that all plays out. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the actual um, um, zoning map now. Um, and that, again, it's just for that single parcel so that it, since it is now owned by the property that is zoned general business um, and the parking lot has been approved, it's, it's merged for the purposes of zoning anyway. Um, and we have split zones in the city where portions of, of a property are one zone and the other portion is a different zone. In this case, the applicant is just asking to sort of Make it uniform. It's all good. Yeah. So it looks like there's a, a someone here to speak to number one, which is a map change to rezone three right avenue from urban residential C to general business. We're all still here. Um, we hope you'll support it. Uh, why it's here is because at the time that the lot came up or they reached some agreement to purchase it, we didn't know that we would be able to get a special permit in terms of the design criteria for the lot. So we filed a petition for a zone change. That's a changing neighborhood. Represented a number of owners as the various zone changes in that area to try and clean up the gateway to Northampton. That's been a goal for a long time. Uh, the road work down there, a number of other issues, certainly expanding the GB zone a number of years ago and now pulling the CB zone I think helps. Uh, and this is sort of part of that. This lot is already bordered on three sides by GB. Uh, and while it's merged for zoning purposes, the problem with that is merged for zoning purposes means you have to comply with the most stringent zoning, which is URC. Someone asked the question earlier, although they have a permit to be there now. Someone asked the question earlier, would this put parking lots in zoning in residential areas? The only place they are allowed in residence is URC, which is mixed use. So in other words, it already has to have a business use there. So it won't be going into URA or URB districts. That's not allowed. The only place in the ordinance you can do it is in a URC zoning district, which is a mixed use business and residential. So that's the only places that parking lots are allowed in a, quote, residential zone, is the URC district. I also think, uh, as Leslie mentioned, a lot of these problems that uh, uh, we look at when we're coming in and out of town down there are part of the fact that when that opened, it was the only location east of the Mississippi. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing cars from New Jersey, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, everywhere when it first opened. As more sites are approved by the commission, I think that will abate a lot of this anyway. It doesn't mean that they don't 
uh, or don't want or need the parking down there, which you approve. But I think that the big issue of the cones and the traffic and the rest of that will be solved just by having other sites. And it doesn't necessarily mean in Northampton, although we'd like that, but as they, as they appear in other locations, they won't necessarily be traveling here. New York is now putting legislation forward to do it. That'll cut that traffic out. Rhode Island is too, although I don't think we get many Rhode Island. But when we were the only one east of the Mississippi, uh, we got a lot of traffic. So anyway, we ask you to support this. If you looked at the site, if you look at the other zoning changes you have, which are trying to move central business that way, that means anything that would fit GB is going to be pushed further down. So having at least this one, if not when the city wants to bring other zoning changes in effect down that way, we'll push it for GB. What I always say about the, what the zoning districts do and the zoning ordinance does is when a developer wants to look at a project, the first thing they look is, can I do it? And basically the ordinance tells you what you can do. So if you're looking at a project and you can only do it in CB, then you've got to look in CB. If you make some more general business CB, then general business is of a necessity going to be squeezed for space that have general business uses that won't, while well, the use might fit in CB, the other dimensional stuff might. So it pushes it. So we'd encourage you to support this zone change, even though it, I don't, it seems redundant now that they have a permit, but it's for the future uh, in terms of the use of the site and other things on that site. So we urge you to support it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, so just as a matter of process, we under the 720 hearing, we have these four items. Mm -hmm. Are we going to take them one by one and vote on them? Because um, number two is a number of bullets. Do we want to move this number one and vote on that and, and ask for people who want to speak for or against this? Or yeah. how should we proceed? You, it might be easier for you to close out each one and take, um, you know, make a motion to recommend to city council um, for each one. So take hearings of um, the ones as you get to them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either in favor or against the, uh, this um, recommended zoning change at 3 Wright Avenue? <laughs> Okay, hearing none, is there any uh, motion by the board? Motion to move the close public comment. Okay. Second. All those in favor? You two are quite prepared to answer. All right. All right. Okay, that's passed. Um, is there a, a motion to recommend this to the City Council or the I move that we uh, support Section uh, 350 3.4 map change to rezone. Right Avenue from urban residential to general business. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah. Thank you. All of them, any discussion about this change, this recommendation? All right, all in favor? All right. Any opposed? Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And then the question about um, our I board members who may. <laughs> You're in two of these under number, number I'm, two. I'm recusing myself Thanks. from number two. No, from number two. All right. Okay. One board member works for a, a business that is one of these businesses, one of these uh, locations out being we recommended for rezoning. So we're Excuse. It's often easier if you go sit with the audience for a little bit, you know, then we don't get confused. But, oh. So well, on this is in your area of town, okay? Well, yeah. I don't have any financial interest in these. In any of these parts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so now we're going to talk about section 350-3.4 map change to rezone a uh, number of parcels on Con Street from neighborhood business to central business. I did not realize this was like, that's yeah. not a very good image, so I'm just going to try to find the image for that one. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, 
put this up here and just um, I'll go to Con Street. This is just a <coughs> street with three parcels um, um, on Con Street that are neighborhood business. And I'm going to put the, um, I can put the zoning over here actually. Um, and there, um, the, it includes the parcels that are the World War II Club and then the um, Murphy's Real Estate Building, his neighborhood business, and then farther down um, in this vicinity, um, the remaining parcels are all the way to the corner essentially to service center that are, I'm sorry, to Wright Avenue, the other side, or neighborhood business, to so the um, liquor store on the um, bottom there. Um, and the, um, the neighborhood business is the least dense um, or um, commercial district that we have in the city. And it's, um, there are pockets of neighborhood business um, typically out in the outlying areas in um, sort of, there's one, there um, is one in Leeds. Um, we've slowly been changing neighborhood business to general business. Um, and the goal has been for years to um, think about um, opportunities to um, eliminate that just because they're, um, the difference between neighborhood business and general business are mo is mostly about the types of uses that are allowed, but as we get more specific about site plan review criteria for certain uses, um, then we don't need to use the district prohibition so much about the types of uses. Um, and um, particularly in this location, neighborhood business um, probably doesn't make so much sense anymore. You, you can't get the heights or the build out of properties um, as you can in um, central business. Um, a few years ago, we uh, actually pro um, proposed to the Planning Board City Council from our office a rezoning to central business um, from the intersection of South Street down to this area of neighborhood business. And it was um, the only portion that was rezoned at that time was where Paradise Copies is now, and the mini mark down here was uh, rezoned to central business. The concern about going further was mostly about the, um, the related design criteria and design review that's associated with central business, uh, central business district under the Central Business Architecture Committee guidelines. So what's on the table today is a rezoning to central business, but not with a separate um, ordinance change to carry those central business architecture review standards. And the reason for that is, again, sort of going back to that conversation about form-based code, when um, we do adopt the form-based code, which we hope will be this year at some point, that will divide, that will create sub-districts from the corridors and have different design criteria applicable as opposed to having one uniform design review process or criteria for the entire district. So that's why we're sort of splitting this rezoning and just allowing for the uses and the intensity of the build out in these areas, but not design standards yet because they'll be forthcoming when we adopt the form-based code for this area. Um, we don't know of any projects that, you know, new development projects, um, but this was, this were, this is, was initiated by the reuse um, and the sale of the World War II Club to a new owner. Originally, the World War II Club was allowed as a, like a membership club, which is allowed in neighborhood business but actually the functionality that goes on in there isn't allowed in neighborhood business. It is allowed in central business though. So the same type of uses will continue in that building, but they can't under the current zoning when it changes out to a lower. So that's what initiated it, although it's very much tied to uh, plans that we started years ago about sort of looking at this corridor and rezoning it to central business. Um, and then I'm going to bring up the lines too, but that's all I have for my presentation. Well, that was a good point that eventually when the uh, form-based code comes in, we'll have these more distinct areas mm -hmm. um, where different design guidelines will move. 
So why are we? Why don't we wait on rezoning this part of Conch Street until those form-based codes come into play? Are we putting the cart before the horse? Um, well, again, it's because of this. Uh, essentially, it was initiated because of the sale of Gorbachev okay. Club. Those owners. It, it's both related to the sale and then the new owner wants to continue the use, but we, we can't do that under the current And see, we want to initiate something with the World War II Club, we might as well take that stretch um, along with it. So it's Right, because there's several it. lots, and then there's a break, and then there, there's another section of neighborhood business. So it makes sense to just do all the neighborhood business on yep. Pond Street now, yep. and then... Um, <coughs> It'll be set up to go for when the, we adopt the form-based code. Change of ownership doesn't affect zoning, so why would that be? Used? Um, because the you they the use morphed over time under the World War II Club into something that actually, when you look at it, is not allowed by the current zoning. And the new owner wants to continue that, but because there are several licenses that have come up, and now we look at it and we say, well, actually, what you were doing doesn't comply with zoning. So, so uh, I mean, I'm, is there a way of, I mean, we don't know exactly what what the form-based code is that we put in place, but is there a way to just make sure that, um, or just handle with more care anything that's, any development that happens here until, you, until we have this code in place? I mean, it's not going to be that long. Okay. Um, there aren't any demolition permits that are underway okay. for any of those properties. Um, they're um, pretty stable going businesses at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's that much of a gap. I mean, yes, there's a gap, but you know, any new construction is going to require a review by the planning board. Okay. So, so we can use that filter yeah. of the uh, right. Yeah. So are we going to review these one by one or in bulk? In bulk? Could, you, could you identify which businesses are there so we'll know yep. what um, they are? Yep, let me just, um, I want to pull up this. And I would think, we, I mean, yeah, it makes sense to you. Unless there's controversy, controversy about any one of them. Just. Right, unless there's, you know, some abutter, somebody here right. who wants to speak about a specific property right. that we will not open it. Maybe yeah. we should open it up. But I think Alan has a good idea if we could identify the properties first so we all yeah. know what we're talking about here, 32C, 39A. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what was that? You don't know what 39A is? No, <laughs> 39A, <laughs> 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 but not 003. Uh, that one, that one, <laughs> So the um, doing in here. So this area here is where, um, if you can see my cursor, is um, the block that was rezoned central business. I don't know five, seven years ago, and the very yeah. last property there is Paradise Copies. And then this darker hue here, that those are the neighborhood business parcels that are being proposed um, now. So it's these. Yeah these parcels here, and that is, um, I'll just, I can just go to street view so you can see that. Um, so that's the World War II Club, plus there's a parking lot parcel that goes to service, I'm sorry, um, Smith, Smith Street. Um, and then it also includes, um, this, the real estate um, parcel there. So that's that um, block, those parcels there. Um, What's the, it seems like there's an island of a few little houses, because they're currently houses, the idea is not to <coughs> them, like it should be houses forever because they're there. No, forever. so that's the conversation we'll have, the bigger the conversation for the, with the form-based code. But, um, uh, we didn't want to do that in the absence of form-based code at this point. Um, so then the next block is, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
is, is the much bigger block that includes, um, uh, and I'll go down the street view, but I think um, this is a medical um, facility place, this is an office building, and then there is a like a three-family house or something on the other corner of service center, and then the office building backing up, that's not one of these. Yes, it is, because that's neighborhood business. It's not listed as one of the parking. Um, zero zero four. Yep, I can show. So this is the that's first the dialysis. Yep, the place. dialysis. Then there is a house that's in that um, um, that block, but it's neighborhood business now anyway, so it's not in a residential zone. Mm -hmm. And then this. Um, the next one is the office building. Right. Three nine eight zero zero four. Yep, ninety. Ninety Pond um, Street, but that's not, that's not on your list. Not on this list. I looked at my tax bill. Um, you have a different number. Right. Did you bring that number with you? <laughs> nope. Let me just turn. But this I did on. look at it this afternoon to be sure it wasn't one of these. Um, I thought I did. Um, this whole block is neighborhood business. It's um, the and it goes down to the to the um, liquor, liquor store. store. Sorry. <coughs> so let me just go. It's not on the um, legal address there. You're saying. And I also didn't get notified. There's someone else in your building that was notified. Or, no, maybe that's the next parcel. Well, there are three owners. Okay. And three separate um, parcels. Well, if that's the case, then it was a mistake in the legal notice, so that means we might have to re notify for that. It's also being noticed. I'll send the notice out to the city council because they're doing a public hearing, and I can change that. Um, but I wanted. So 90 pounds. This parcel is not even on the list at all. So. Yeah. So that was an error. It's meant to be on here. So we have to re notify the property owners of that. So can we just deal with the property of the World War II Club? And you can do all the rest of them? All the rest of them, and then come back to. That yeah. two story commercial building? Yep. So, yeah, it's just, it's all off of Yeah. It doesn't raise any very legal issues of others having notification of the wrong list of things or anything? Or For a map change, abutters aren't notified, just the property owners. Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a good question. Would any of the property owners in that building, if they weren't notified, have any issue with? Uh, other properties being uh, recommended for the zoning. But they're not, again, we don't notify abutters. You're only no. legally required to notify. So it doesn't, you know, if, if you, so the, pro, the issue is you couldn't rezone that property without proper <coughs> notice and, and public hearing. Right. But the fact that they weren't notified for the rest of the properties yeah. doesn't matter because only legally are you required to notify the people whose map you're changing. I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. And the decision about the rest of the properties has been noticed and it's on the agenda. So uh -huh. if they had something to say about that, after <coughs> their concerns about their own property, they can be here now. Right? Oh. That's why I came to the meeting. <laughs> That's why you don't have to recuse yourself either. <laughs> Unless you want to so that you can speak either for or against the... Uh, mm -hmm. um, so we're going to move forward and take up these other properties, 32C, 102 through 105, and 39A. So we still haven't kind of called them out. I would like to know which one of these numbers, like is the World War II Club, which one is the dialysis center? Can we do that? Um, yep, I can. Is it okay if we just, you know, do we need to know which is which? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, think, as long as we know yeah. what is. You don't necessarily need to match them up. I can find that for you because I have the spreadsheet. Um, yeah. But um, this is going to take me a second. Well, maybe we could note for the minutes to what number uh, that, what do you call that? So, 
90 Constant. What, a, what an attractive name. Yeah, right. Great big sign out in front. It's yeah. Ninety Street. <clears throat> um, you might, you can do public comment on this. Okay, so I think most of the public has heard where we are. We're changing uh, parcels on Street from neighborhood business to central business. And you've seen on the map the properties that we're discussing. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or opposed? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and your address for our records. And I'm Jim Olson. I uh, live in Waitley, Massachusetts, 38 Weber Road in Waitley. But I uh, operate a company called Signature Sounds. We're based on Masonic Street in Northampton, 32 Masonic Street. Uh, and there we operate um, a small listening room called the Parlor Room. Been doing that since 2012, and we are the folks who are uh, attempting to purchase the World War II Club. Peter Hamlin, my partner in this venture, and myself, it's a, a new venture based on our previous experience, and uh, we just want to obviously uh, a positive vote for the zoning change. It came in as a quite a surprise. We were already into the purchase process when we found out that the property was not zone for what they've been doing for years and years. Um, what we hope to do is a continuation of what the World War II Club has been doing. Uh, we'll be presenting live music, comedy, entertainment. We'll be uh, renting the space for weddings, for uh, private parties, for town events. Uh, basically, we want, we want to keep uh, going what has been happening there, make some physical improvements inside the building, but essentially to, to carry on. Thank you. Please. Uh, my name is Teddy Gorfine, and I live on 23 Smith Street, which is directly across from the World War II Club. And it's sort of interesting, I'm not very good with knowing the town politics, but to know that the World War II Club has been zoned not for the business that it has. It already... Um, <clears throat> so... Already in the evening, um, there's a smoking area right uh, directly across from where I live. And so I hear people who have been drinking and smoking and a lot of noise in that area. And what, um, I don't remember your name, and I'm sorry, what Jim, what Jim is proposing sounds like a whole lot more than what the World War II Club is doing now. At this point, the problematic evenings when the World War II closes at 1 o'clock, I can regularly count on hearing people leaving. Oftentimes, people are intoxicated. Um, and primarily, that's on the weekend, not so much during the week. What uh, Jim is proposing sounds like there's going to be activity many nights of the week. And it already is um, an issue for me, living there, living directly across the street. So this whole thing is an area of concern for me. Just, just so we're clear, I'm mm -hmm. you're across on the other side of the street. I'm on across. the Smith Street side, directly across the street, the house that has the uh, very cute picket fence around it. So it is directly across from the parking lot that has the smoking area. Um, it's the main parking lot. The parking lot on the other side, which abuts Murphy's Realty, I think the parking lot is smaller. Um, but again, the, the most active evenings is during the weekend and weddings and comedy and live music uh, with alcohol. It makes me very nervous. Thank you. Could you just spell your last name for us? Sure. G-O-R-F-I-N-E. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Go ahead. You go first. You're up. Who's ever up first? I'm never up first. You were standing. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> Go for it. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Thibault. I, um, well, from 2014 to 2019, I was uh, an owner on Wright Ave, so this meeting really at home. But um, I am also the treasurer for the World War II Club. Um, so, so I just want to speak for a minute towards you know some of the concerns, of course, but also towards what we're trying to do here. Um, 
we're not asking this board to operate in any way differently than we've been already for 30 years licensed by the town to operate. But um, a, a carry on of uh, um, uh, not just part of our mission, but, but more of a lot of the reason why so many people come to this town um, and, and enjoy you know, some of what we have to offer. Um, as far as, as, you know, I heard a lot of uh, pieces with that and being good neighbors. Um, that's always been a concern for us. Um, I believe some of the other tenants in that parking lot or in that building use the parking lot on a daily basis, along with the senior center, um, especially on days like inclement in weather or today and, and whatnot. I mean, if you drove by today, our parking lot was full um, from, from both buildings. Um, and, and obviously, noise is a, maybe not yours particularly, but a few of those homes on that street. Um, um, uh, and, and noise is a concern, and, uh, you know, 100%. And, and um, we have, uh, of course, you know, uh, per the requirement of, of the town, any night that we're open past midnight, uh, door people there trying to avert that, but that's a part of what comes with, you know, operating a bar in this town. Um, but what we're hopeful here, and, and what, you know, as well, we're strongly urging, um, is, is an opportunity here for you know uh, some of the good work to be carried on, some of the good missions, some of uh, what we've already been doing for a long, long time, we'll be licensed to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Murphy, and I own the building at 44 Count Street, which is one of the units you want to change. And I have no objection to being changed to central business. Obviously, it's a much better commercial zone than neighborhood business. <clears throat> but I want to give it some historical perspective because I've owned that building for 27 years. Um, my first concern is um, the design standards being separated from the zoning, as the chair mentioned earlier. Uh, I happen to have spent eight years chairing Central Business Architectural District, so I know a lot about the relationship between Central Business and the design element that is controlled by the Architectural District. I am very uncomfortable with you changing the zone without also having on the table what the design standards are going to be. Because I'm very familiar with the relationship between the current design standards and the Central Business District as it now exists, spending eight years chairing that committee. Um, so I, I'm not comfortable with your changing the zone and leaving the design standards just floating around out there uh, to come later. I'd like to know what the carrot and the stick is at the same time. So, as the chair mentioned earlier, I'm not really comfortable with them happening separately. Um, I'd like them to happen together so I know what the good is and what the bad is before I decide whether I like it or not. <clears throat> the other thing would be my relationship with my neighbor, the World War II Club, which is a very charmed entity. When I bought my building, we were both zoned URC. So there was a membership club in URC that, unbeknownst to me, had a restaurant license, not a club license. Somewhere in the Mizani era, it was issued a restaurant license, not a club license, in URC. Somewhere down the line, uh, we all changed to neighborhood business. Um, and then subsequently, a permit was granted to cover the license that the club had that it probably never should have had in the first place. It should have had a uh, club license, not a, not a restaurant license. So um, now it's C with a permit for the license that it has, but for all intents and purposes, it's been running as a membership club for the whole time I've been there. At the moment, it's not even open Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night. I think it's only open Thursday through the weekend. So it is not a real intense use because they're not open seven days a week. Um, now it's going to change, and a lot of the reason it needs to change is that the people selling it didn't do their homework and figure out in the first place that it had a license for something that shouldn't have been there and advertised it and solicited buyers representing the property as something it couldn't be. So now again, we are going to change the zoning to make up for a license it shouldn't have had in a place it shouldn't have been because it was misadvertised by the brokers that were dealing with it because they didn't do their homework. So all this makes me say, let's take a minute, <clears throat> let's decide 
what the design standards are going to be for areas outside of the current central business area so those of us that are going to be changed know what the carrot and the stick is before we go there and then deal with the anomaly that this building is because it probably since before I was there never had its zoning match its license or its use and now we're deciding well because they misrepresented it and found a buyer that wants to do what they can't do because the license and the zone don't match it will just change the zoning. So this is a giant hairball that's been rolling around in the city for over 30 years, and now we're going to try and fix it this way. So I would like you to take all of that into consideration. Um, I do do a business function in my building, but I have a residential apartment upstairs, which I myself lived in for a while while I was doing my house over, and uh, it's pretty noisy down there on weekend nights. Um, I have gone out my parking lot in the morning and connected collected uh, undergarments and personal hygiene items from people who couldn't wait to go home and had to use the trunk of their car for their fun. So, believe me, living next to a full-time entertainment venue um, bordering a residential zone, and everything from me the other way down to Maple, Maplewood, uh, Maplewood Terrace, whatever it is, those, with the exception of a couple of multifamilies, are uh, owner-occupied properties. And I think somebody over here said she's living on um, right Avenue, which faces it, there's a residential property on the other corner. So let's let's connect the design with the zone, and then let's try to figure out what this place really is or isn't, because it's been for for the whole time I've been there, and probably longer than that. Um, a club with a bar license in URC, then it gets changed to neighborhood business, then it gets a permit. It, it, we've been fixing the zoning to accommodate floating around uses in this place for a long time. Um, and we're going to have to transfer a liquor license too, which is a restaurant license with full alcohol that doesn't even really really fit. So I think we've got to kind of take a more comprehensive look at what this is, where it is, what's around it, what, what we want the, the neighborhood to be like, um, and, and do a more comprehensive look at it than just, oh, by the way, Let's fix the zoning because some realtor decided to sell something for what it really was, and now we're going to patch it up later. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Let's hear before we go a second time. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this issue for the first time? Then we'll come back around again. Please. Um, again, I apologize. It's because I'm not familiar with town politics. Okay. Um, and I really appreciate getting a bit of history because I'm new to this. Um, so I just want to say that on Smith Street, um, first of all, I didn't know that abutters wouldn't get uh, uh, notices about this. So I found out about this meeting yesterday just from happenstance, otherwise I wouldn't be here. I am sure that my neighbors, because I'm not the only house on Smith Street, and there is another house, there are two other houses that would be directly related there. So there is, I'm not the only one that lives in that area. I have a tenant above me. Um, so, uh, and hopefully this will be continued in such a way that I can let my neighbors know when the next meeting is so you can hear from other people besides myself. So the concern is not only for my own, you know, uh, well-being and, 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 and comfort, but also for the, you know, real estate value of owning a house in an area right next to a bar and I appreciate the history because I mean, uh, now we know for sure that this proposed new club is not going to be doing the same as a World War Club. It is quite a few steps above that since it will be open, it sounds like, more than you know, three or four nights a week. And already, as it's been said, and I've noticed myself um, you know, a lot of noise on the weekends. And when the, in the warmer weather, when the windows are open, it's even more so. So thank you for your time. Uh, and just regardless of what we decide tonight, there will be another public hearing in front of the City Council in the future. So, um, you know, if you want to let your neighbors know. I will. March 9th. Yeah. Excuse me? March 9th. Thank you so much. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention, uh, you know, we have been operating the parlor since 2012, uh, right in downtown on Sonic Street. We do primarily folk music, bluegrass music, jazz, some rock, but not, you know, it's not heavy metal night. It's, this is not music that's, uh, you know, attractive to teens. 
Um, we're good neighbors. You could check our public file. We, we've uh, been good neighbors and uh, operate everything professionally. And know what we're doing and feel like we could uh, keep uh, things down in the neighborhood and, and operate it in a very professional manner. So. We appreciate that. I think many of us have been to your establishment. Unfortunately, 10 years from now, we're not sure about perhaps the next iteration of that location mm -hmm. would be like so. But thank you. And that's what I was going to mention. That once you chain this and you put uh, this license in that location, zone central business, Mr. Olson does have a good, good reputation for the sort of music he does, but Mr. Olson is not going to be there forever. And once you change it, uh, he can sell it to whoever he like, and they can do any kind of entertainment they want there within the scope of their license. So you might always not say both. Well, one thing I'm confused about the these licenses is, like, I mean, who's, it sounds like someone screwed up, and I'm just not sure who it was at some point, and I'm not sure that this is a bad way of correcting it. So that it's clear from the get-go that this is what you can do specifically. Yeah. Be I mean, I've only, lived there, I've only lived here, uh, and I'm, you know, cognizant of the neighbors, but I've only lived here uh, knowing it as a place that you go listen to karaoke, you know, party party. It sounds like there was a mistake that was made at some point. And just to yeah. uh, uh, clarify a couple of points. Um, we have been operating seven days a week full time um, for much longer than I've been alive. Uh, we only reduced uh, to Thursday through Sunday in the last two months, and that was as a part of our sale not as our normal business practice. So I wanted to clarify that point. Um, we appreciate, you know, the period of the party party. But we're also, you know, uh, on the town website, first night bands yep. from 12 till, you know, uh, midnight. And we're a summer music festival and everything else that we've been licensed to do since 1982. Um, I don't think that this is, um, correction of a, uh, I, I don't view this as the band-aid fix for a problem. I view this as what it should have been when we were licensed to do everything that we've done for that entire time frame. And um, I do appreciate Mr. Murphy's concerns. Again, we all try to be good neighbors, whatnot. I just would like to point out that uh, Mr. Murphy also has a dog in the race and a reason to have a negative uh, opinion on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else before we turn to the board discussion? Okay, why don't we keep the public hearing open just for a little bit these days for you to ask some questions. I, I am concerned. Uh, I mean, to me, it makes sense to change, ch change the zoning. Um, but I do, do think that divorcing the two things is um, that that's that's an issue. I think I think if, if we, I would have no problem supporting this if we just knew what what the design what what the restrictions were. I mean, that World War II club's been there for a long time. One of the reasons what why people like when I first came to the city, it was a, it was a place where I where I went. Um, there's a there's a value to having clubs in our city, right. um, and um, but I do think that it, that uh, like I'm sorry that this that this might delay the sale, but I'm just trying to like I'm just trying to figure out how to. I I think he's correct that divorce makes things two things does not make sense. Yeah. The design guidelines that are kind of in the wings and moving to this new yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that, that could be done is that um, we could put forward an amendment that expands the Central Business Architecture Review boundaries along with the zoning district boundaries. And that would require, 
you know, advertising and, and so just carry the existing guidelines along with it. Um, and then when form-based code is adopted, then both those get swapped out for form-based code. That makes a lot, a lot more sense. So it would be much more stringent on an applicant now. For, for, the, for, the, for the short term. Well, the short term. I don't, I, I wouldn't use the word stringent. I would say the standards aren't, um, don't, there are definitely review standards for anomalies, and there are definitely review standards for transitional residential buildings. So there are what we would refer to as transitional residential buildings in these neighborhood business blocks. And there are clearly anomaly buildings, um, like the World War II Club and the 90 Con Street and the dialysis building. All of those would be considered anomalies. Um, and so the Central Business Architecture Committee does have the jurisdiction to say, I mean, in fact, it's spelled out. When you have X type of building, you treat it this way. And But um, the overarching um, standards are really um, geared towards thinking about um, moving more towards what's referred to as a theme commercial building, which is what you'd find on Main Street. But that doesn't mean that every single change to um, committee looks at um, requires that building to be in that form. We thought that it might be um, that it might be more palatable to separate them now, but we certainly could go back and advertise, you know, tomorrow for a, a map change to the central business map section of the code, which is not part of zoning; it's a separate ordinance. Um, and bring that forward. Wait, uh, Carol, I'm confused by what you said. If if we adopted uh, for the Murphy Building um, central business zoning, would that bring with it the architectural standards or not? So um, the architectural standards are not part of the zoning. So what's in front of you is that, uh, what we've done in the past is both. Um, submit, whenever there's been an expansion of the Central Business District, we've um, pro, um, shown one ordinance amendment with, that would be to the Section 3.4 zoning map, and then another ordinance that's actually Chapter 156 of the Code of Ordinances, which addresses the Central Business Architecture Guidelines and the boundary of the, where those guidelines are applicable. And so there are two separate ordinances that go forward together to match up. In this instance, we just put the zoning piece, 353.4, forward, but not the 156. All right. So it's unambiguous that changing the zoning will not bring with it the architectural requirements. Right, because we haven't changed the boundary of the architectural okay. requirements. Right. So we could, if there, you know, that is an option as opposed to waiting for form-based code yeah. to be, yeah. All right. The, the, okay, so I don't see any problem with that. On the World War II Club, I, I feel uncomfortable um, for formalizing by changing it to central business the activities that have been going on and apparently have some some uh, statements about it exceeding <coughs> what they were allowed to do under neighborhood business I, uh, without wider advertising to the neighborhood. Um, I mean, I, I, I understand that for change of zone, butters don't get notified. Um, but it wouldn't seems that for a change like this, perhaps they should be. I mean, it's a change in a sense, even though it may allow, it, it may not be different from what they have been doing in the past. It means they'll be able to legally do it forevermore. And um, I think the neighbors should be notified of that. I'm not sure. But presumably everybody already thought that they were... I mean, it seems like everybody, including the property owners, already thought that they were doing it legally. So um, although, it, I mean, it's a sort of administrative change, but I'm not sure that, that I think it would be more surprising that it wasn't legal. Though. Yeah. I mean, the same uh, could be said about any of the properties that are ever changed, have a map change, that all the uses that are, that 
are a part of that zoning district are then allowed. So any any property then could. Well, it's not a non-conforming so, use we'll because the use was exceeding. Apparently, there's a possibility that the use was exceeding what was allowed under the current zoning. I think we're getting too hung up on this question of this club. Yeah. The point is, there's a triangle. There's a triangle of property between Pleasant and Con Street, between the Circle and downtown. And the vision for the town is that it should be more like downtown and less like a sea of parking lot and and retail or whatever. And the fact that there's an existing use which may or may not be conforming, this is not being this is done be, being done tonight because there's some urgency because of this right. sale. That should be irrelevant. The point is, from a planning point of view, that should be more of like part of downtown. And I agree that I don't like this idea of switching the zone and then switching what the zone is with the form of this code later. I, I guess maybe this architectural review makes sense to, to satisfy that. But I don't think we should get too hung up on there's a specific club that may or may not be yeah, available. I, That's not, not the that's issue. Right point. I, but it's not really a commercial district. It's very mixed and there's many, um, as David said, many owner-occupied residential buildings and whether they're owner-occupied or not really is beside the point. They're residential. So it's, I don't think it merges into downtown. But well, I think the proposal is that it will. From a plan well, point of view, that's, that's true, but that's a big, big change, it seems to me. But, but uh, I thought that what Kellen was saying is that by, by talking about, by connecting it to the central business architectural zone, now we will have to re-advertise everything. Well, we're not going to do that. No, no she I'm, said that's that you, not happening. Well, that's up to me. No, no, right. No. So uh, you could make a recommendation that um, to city council that you don't think those things should go separately, and you think that central business architecture guidelines should come along hand in hand with this, and then um, city council could, you know, simultaneously we could. You know, separately bring that forward, but city council could take that under advisement, decide what to do. Well, the um, but that, that's not advertised. This is just, as you pointed out, changing it to CD right. zone, and it, and it does not bring along with the, the architectural. That's what I'm saying is that, that your recommendation could be to council. You don't think they should be separated, so then council could take that under advisement, decide what to do with it, and. At the same time, we at the staff level can say, okay, we could start that public hearing process for bringing along the Central Business Architecture Guidelines so that they could either potentially catch We're not up. making the final choice no matter what. Right, well, sure, that's true. But I don't even know that we could make that recommendation because that's not advertised and it's not on the agenda. No, well, I think that's part of what a recommendation entails. It's not voting on it. So we're really fulfilling our role and, and we're triaging some of the input from the, the public about okay. this issue. And then we're refining it so that when the city council gets to it, they understand a little bit better the issue well, at hand. That's, but the point would really be if you all agree and you say, you know what, I don't think this is a good idea because it doesn't include the guidelines, then your recommendation would be it should not be adopted. Our recommendation as a board should it should not be adopted until and unless the guidelines come along with it. So that's what they'd be hearing back from the planning board, even though it's not part of this. They they would hear the rationale for why you're not recommending it to go forward. Right. I, just to clarify, my own personal opinion on that would be that they sh it should not incorporate the architectural design standards that it should be separate and it makes sense to change it to central business, that doesn't at all persuade me that the architectural standards that apply on Main Street should apply on Common Street. Right, and right. just to be clear, that, that doesn't mean that, that they would, all the standards on Main Street would apply. It just, they're different, there's different ways to treat um, anomaly buildings and transitional residential buildings, but the overarching guidance is to sort of transition towards this theme commercial building, um, which is on Main Street. And so that's the nature of the changes in the form-based code would be to say, you know, there may be different types of design that are appropriate for different areas. But 
the Central Business Architecture Committee still has the ability to evaluate pro uh, properties and approve permits for changes that don't necessarily look like Main Street buildings. But only if they're given that authority in this right. Right. Exactly. location. Right. Exactly. Just in case. He's yeah, so there. we're facing. Get to well, me, we get to me, we get to me. Yeah, that's his. Yeah. He wanted to stand up there. That's his yeah. right. Uh, that's right. right. We're the board. I'm going to withdraw my I from I, 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 yeah. You want to send some of your years when of you're, experience. When you're ready, when you're ready to talk to me, talk okay. to me. Okay. Um, please, Mr. Murphy, you have some light to set on this. But yeah, because, um, you know, it's sort of weird that the way we solve this is to decide to bring the Central Business Architectural District design standards down here. Clearly the planning staff didn't think it was appropriate because they didn't bring it forward. It's no less appropriate to throw it in the 11th hour to try to make this thing go. And I'm really interested in why this has to go because those standards really don't fit. Yeah, they deal with anomaly buildings. They're called anomaly buildings because they don't really fit into the character of what the downtown design standard guidelines are about. I know them really well. You know, I administered them for eight years. So they weren't going to go down here. But now to make it happen, yeah, we'll bring them along, even though a while ago they didn't really fit. But we're going to do different ones later. I mean, the, just, you know, the gist of it, and, and the biggest concern, let's leave the World War II Club out of it for a moment, because that's a hairball of its own nature. But I don't really want to change without knowing what my design standards will be at the same time. And the ones from downtown are really inappropriate for them, which I think was recognized, which is why they were originally weren't going to go there. So to now decide to make the whole thing work, we're going to take them, is even worse than changing me and having me try and guess what they're going to be in the future. You know, that's worse, you know, because they don't fit. So to, to just throw them down there to flush this thing through is worse than leaving me wondering what they're going to be. Let's just do it all at once. I would like to address the statement about having a... Uh, a dog in the race, or however it was. Um, I do know a fraternal organization that was interested in the building. I'm not involved in that. I had them contact the owners of the building directly. I have never shown the building to anybody. I'm in no way standing to make any money on any transfer of the building. Uh, these people dealt with the ownership and the management of that club themselves directly, leaving me totally out of it, which was my desire, because I don't want to get in the middle of it, because. I could have ended up here someday, which is the way I wanted it to be. So, great. Thank, Thank you. you for clarifying that. We also, yeah. we also note that people who have an interest in the property, it's their duty to come and speak about it. So, I right. think having a dog in the race. Right. Yeah. You well, I mean, come and talk, even if you, didn't I, I would, you know, it, it would be inappropriate for me to try and queer a deal if I had a buyer that would benefit from that. That's wrong. I don't. The only people I know who were interested, I had contact the ownership of that club directly, leaving me totally out of it because I knew at some point I might be here tonight to want to make an opinion about the future of my building and the impact on me, so I didn't want to queer my position by saying, hey, you know, if I mess up this deal, my people may prevail. I don't have people. Thank you. Thank you. This is the small town politics that I think that you were alluding to <laughs> that we try to stay away from, but often it rears its head in meetings like this. Well, there are a lot of terms that you use. I have no idea sure. what they even mean. Sure. So I'm glad we have another chance to get some of the neighbors together because I know that you're, most of you are saying that, you know, that let's just change the zoning, but what about the people who live in the, in the neighborhood? What about, you know, the fact that I get woken up at 12, 1 o'clock in the well, morning on the weekends and that this is proposed to be even more than that? How, how long have you lived there? 11 years. 11 years. So the club was there when you bought the house and moved in. Right, but I so. have no idea about this zoning faux pas, and it took me a while to figure out what was going on yeah. there, too. Yeah, yeah. I think all the damage, I think it's very interesting that we have this adjacent to this conversation about parking around the street in a circle, and I don't know, I fully express what I was thinking, I guess, when we were ta talking about the parking lot and the, and the pot shop. The reality is, like, parking behind the building, fantastic. I think the issue is, there's acres of parking, and in the I hate when I drive by, I see all this parking by the bowling alley and all this big RC of parking. And I love the idea of like the city and the planning department taking a strong hand and like thinking about what this area of town should be and like what and not just saying, oh, it's been this since 1954, so that's what it's going to be in 2054. 
I think what, what everyone's kind of struggling with is like not having that clear vision. Like, can there be a municipal lot here which would deal with some of these issues and share parking? Like, you would never ask the roost to build a parking lot to satisfy all their, you know, which is crazy. And if the, if the central business district is going to grow, which I totally support, then it should be treated in some of these other ways, like the central business district is in terms of community amenities like parking and, and uh, noise and all these things. And, um, I think that's where some of these struggles are happening. Um, so I would hate to see them yeah. tell the dudes trying to like, shut them off <coughs> because of some weird thing. I, mean, I don't hate that much. I've never been there. Probably not going to go, but like, it just seems like to put the cart before the horse. When we are, we do seem close to like coming to an answer on some of these issues. The other unique piece of this part of uh, the downtown area is that it is right now a transitional to mixture of residential yeah. rentals, and I do feel at uh, Mr. Verson's point that I feel it's a little strange that there isn't more notice of the meetings. I I, I would like to look at that the way that we notify of butters. Um, and certainly when there's a development or a site plan or anything like that, our extensive, we're going to talk about it later on this evening, the way we notify the butters is pretty extensive. And this has some big impact on someone if they have lived there for 40 years. And I'm sure that they're aware, by, because they've read the Gazette, that uh, a business wants to move into the World War II club, but they're not necessarily aware of this meeting happening. So I don't know how we do that short term get to notify more people about these changes, even for the city council meeting. But it seems like that is another point that we need to kind of investigate a little bit. That's just a question for Carol. When the last time this came to the neighborhood was when Paradise Copies and the Mini Mart were changed. And that was what, five or six years ago? Yeah, it might have been long. Right. At that point in time, when was the change made not to notify of butters or map changes. Because I seem to recall the proposal at that time was to go further down the street, even reach me. Yep. But the residents between Paradise and myself were very vocal about not wanting to go further down the street. Now at that time, were they notified as the butters? Was that before the change was made? or? It's a statutory provision, the stat but so I don't think that's changed at all. All right, that didn't change. So they somehow found out about it, because I know <coughs> they were very, uh, I didn't really say anything at that meeting, because they were very vocal into not wanting to have central business come change their residential buildings to central business. Um, they, they were not interested in the benefits of that zone change, because they were, they were residents. And I just wondered if they had been noticed, or how they found out about it, if they were a butter, well, it was going to affect their buildings. That's how they found out about it, because you were going to change them. So I just answered my own question. But when they knew about it, they were very vocal when they showed up. Yeah. When you say statutory, oh. does that mean by the Commonwealth? Yeah. Right. Yeah, David, can I ask, David, you have an opportunity, I assume, to withdraw your application if you choose to. Is that right? This is not a citizen petition. Yeah. This is no. Oh, oh, this one is not. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is okay. driven by. Yeah, so yeah. did I take it back? No, nope, so I didn't, I, I mean, and all in all, I would be very happy to be changed. To say it's a much better, I mean, I bought the thing that was URC. I was pre-existing non-conforming. Um, I was changed to neighborhood business, not of my petition, because the planning office wanted to do it, and it really didn't make that much difference to me to go to neighborhood business. I don't mind being central business, as you all know, here in the, you know, you know it as well as I do, it's a much better zone to have if you're commercial property. I just don't want to go right. without knowing what design guidelines are going to come along, you know, with the carrot. Um, the, the, what happens at the World War II Club is an aside only because that seems to be what's driving the zone change without the design guidelines. That seems to be why staff has decided they need to make this change without letting the design line guidelines catch up with it. So I don't, you know, I don't want to necessarily pick on these guys. I'm just saying the sale is what has staff driving this change now before the design lines guidelines catch up with the zoning change. That's my objection. Not so much these guys as I want to know carrot stick together, not we're going to change this, and oh, by the way, later we're going to hit you with some design guidelines. I want to know what they both are, so I know whether I like them and support it or not. Because I, 
I mean, what I do there, I can do in the current zone. I could do it in URC. I was pre-existing non-conforming. I probably had more rights then than I do now under your uh, neighborhood business. So, thank yeah. you. Okay. Are clubs not allowed at all under ND? Clubs or restaurants? Um, um, membership clubs, I think, are allowed by special permit. But what they're, but there's not a membership club. It's entertainment. So it's a nightclub more, right. and that's not allowed. In the there's a lot of clubs you go to, and I mean, the smoking band came to New York. There was all these clubs you came and you had to get this little business card and say, oh, you remember now. And then, I mean, isn't that... Isn't that the solution to it? Well, that's what, that's always been the solution. It's the brown paper bag of membership issues. I mean, <laughs> but no, then, I mean, really, and then, But work? then we go back to the bigger issue that you were talking about before. What does... Northampton downtown want to be here. No, <laughs> no, that's we're, no we're talking about that's, I'm saying that's going to be sold with the yeah, it, yeah, 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 that's exactly We're saying she doesn't want to hold up this use. sale yeah. with, over something that currently is. Yeah, but so, uh, the, I mean, there, because of the licensing um, requirements, I mean, there are a lot of, there are different But things. that's not an issue with the planning board. That's not no, but I'm just saying problem. that's not that you're what you're proposing isn't necessarily the solution because mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the solution for the other boards involved. Well, it's a so. it's, that's a decision for that board to make, basically, right? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, if we don't change it, then they could go to that board. Someone could appeal to that board and say it was wrong. Or, no. I don't really know. Also, so, Sam, I'm not sure if I if our obligation is to. Uh, help a sale occur. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I did not mean to. I'm I'm saying that I don't want to stop getting the way of of something. That, that that's what I'm saying. I don't want to help or yeah. or hinder it. I don't. I want to be well by approving right. this zone change. So it really would help the sale, but that's irrelevant. No, but that's my point. Like, I I I do not want to do it relative to to this. To this, right. to this right. business here. I, I like the idea of expanding it with the, I guess, well, I mean, I, before we close the public comment, I would say that right now I would vote to say that my recommendation would be I am against this until until we have a set of uh, no, form-based code. Form code, at which point we can go and talk about it. Talk about it. So that's language we could use for a, a motion for a recommendation to or to the city council that the planning board at this point is opposed to recommending this amendment until the form-based codes are in sync with the neighborhood. There is another option. We could perhaps postpone um, this hearing on this section of the and for on, some other time, time particular on this lot. particular, not that lot, I don't think. I think we would move for all of section two, for all of these that are going to the neighborhood. That's another option, and okay. not make a recommendation. Can I raise one more just observation, is yeah. that we, 45 minutes ago now, approved, or recommended moving an ND lot into, or the URC, or the URC, URC into, yeah. into, into general business. Yeah, into general business, okay, yeah. never mind. Okay. Right. So we could kind of carve these out, this number two, and move on to three and four, and develop maybe maybe these are slightly easier situations. You mean to continue this to another meeting, or just continue it till after you get through the other two? I was going to say continue it to another meeting. I personally don't have any difficulty voting on everything except World War II Club. I, I think that needs more consideration and more neighborhood input. The others, though, uh, I mean, David Murphy's concern about dragging the architectural standards along with it is not what we're adopting, and he could object at such points as that was proposed. But changing the, all of them except um, uh, the World War II Club, to me, uh, I could vote for. But in, but in essence, David, if we um, if, if we do vote for it, then we're saying there's going to be a period of time when there are no 
guidelines. There's no extra steps for any of those other properties, like if the dialysis center is sold, if any of the other places are sold, they can right. pretty much do what they want. And well, just like now, I mean, whatever neighborhood business allows, yeah, it would be the central business, right. and they could do whatever is allowed in because the farm based code, in a sense, is theoretical. It could happen in a month or 10 years. Or yeah, right, right, right. I don't think we can make it yeah. contingent on that. Because, uh, yeah, right. As David said that may I mean, that's projecting so, into the future. Then we'd be leave, leaving that one parcel kind of in limbo. Uh, and then it will be. On the, uh, you know, I, I think if you were to do. You know, you know, think about what comes along with central business. Any one of those parcels could turn into an entertainment or nightclub, and the same notification went to those letters as went to this one. So I think pulling one out, I think that would be more problematic from a spot zoning kind of perspective than, um, than taking them all as a whole. The reverse spot zoning, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the possibility I mean, I guess theoretically that is possible, but it seems extremely remote. That's I mean, uh, something that is already an entertainment venue and restaurant and bar and whatever is different from the dialysis center that's a medical facility. Uh, or for that matter, my building, which should be out there apparently. It's not going to turn from an office building into a Nightclub. I don't know, maybe it should. It should, it should, it should. It should. Yeah. Need the nightclub. <laughs> um, when I just want to mention, I don't want to single them out and say approve everything and leave them out. I don't want to change myself unless I know what the design guidelines are going to be. Okay, I don't, I'm not saying, you know, screw these guys, leave them out of the district and change me. I'm saying I don't really want to see the zoning changed until I know what comes along with it for my property, their property, and all the rest of these properties. Um, so I'm, I'm not here to simply say leave them out or punish them in any way. I'm just saying let's know what's really going to happen here when we make the change. Right. So I, I'm not just picking on them. Yeah. Um, if public's still open, I can address here for a second. Um, just, just I thought on this, and I understand that it's not this board's place to uh, um, hinder or approve a specific sale or anything along those lines. But if I'm understanding what I'm hearing correctly tonight, some of these changes um, this has been talked about for what now, six plus years. It stopped at the Paradise Coffee and Mini Mart. Um, these. You know, th this upcoming proposal on uh, the architectural design for this street and for what, you know, this board is looking for has been something that's been coming for a good long while. What you do have tonight in front of you is an opportunity in this town um, for, you know, something this town can really benefit from. And by pushing this, you know, further down the line, it could hinder that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've heard from one member about how he feels about the situation. Um, I, I, I'm not comfortable in, in moving one or two of these parcels out of here and then okay and the rest. I think, I think if, if we think about a master plan for this area, we have to think about all of these parcels along Con Street. Um, I think there's more to this area around parking and some of those other businesses that, you know, is pertinent but not relevant to this. And I would love to be able to chew on that too, but, uh, you know, that's not in front of us here as far as a, kind of a mini master plan for that triangle between Cons and Pleasant. Um, but what's before us are these properties on Cons, and I think we either have to go with all of them or go with none of them at this point, in, in my personal view. You know, the other point that occurs to me is that before voting on this, I'd like to have a much firmer idea about what's allowed in neighborhood business as opposed to central business. Um, I, I can go through that with you now, or? Yeah, well, okay, I mean, 
Because it's, it's pretty it's small, so you can par uh, Carolyn can paraphrase that pretty quickly for us, the major changes of what's allowed in one and not in the other. We, we should know that at a minimum. So, um, neighborhood business um, <clears throat> is really, it, it's really more about um, scale. Um, and um, so, um, you know, residential, single family homes, actually you need a special permit. The idea is to have um, encouraged ground floor um, uh, commercial. Um, this is a neighborhood business uh -huh. we're talking about now. Yep. yep. Um, so again, two families are, are, are two family dwellings or special permit. Um, more intense multifamilies are allowed by site plan. Um, and then in terms of commercial, um, you know, things like um, bed and breakfast or short-term, you know, other short-term rentals are allowed, lodging houses by special permit, um, mixed residential workspace is allowed, of course, because it's commercial, um, and um, community centers require um, site plan, um, membership club, including um, membership clubs require city council approval. It's one of the things council approves. Um, and under retail, um, so retail space less than 10,000 square feet for a single establishment is allowed, but anything bigger is not allowed for retail. Um, Carolyn, is the World War II Club as presently operated allowed in the center of neighborhood business? No. Yeah. No. Isn't that Even as a pre existing? No, because it's given a permit for one thing right. and it changed. Or it, it uh, the way that, the best way to describe it is it just evolved. It, it yeah. morphed. Right. Um, so, it's, it morphed in a way where a large percentage of this town is perfectly happy with. I mean, I think that needs to be st stated. That's, that's not like this notion that somehow it's stepped over this line mm -hmm. and, is, and is abusing is, is, is completely incorrect. Just keep in mind, Heather, he's up at wearing that, right? <laughs> They're good points. Yeah, come on. No, no, but I mean, I, I, I think that we have to, we have to stress this, is, is that, yes, this has happened, and yes, it has to be resolved, but but the, the notion that it has been abused in this is not correct. Yeah, I don't, no, but there are still licenses. I, I get that. I'm just, I'm just trying, like, this yeah, is a public right, meeting, yeah, and, and, and saying that we are, that, like... No, nobody's telling the World War II Club to cease and desist because of what's right. going on. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and so again, sort of neighborhood business is a scale issue. So for instance, restaurants require a planning board special permit. In central business, restaurants are allowed by right. Um, offices are allowed, um, meaning uh, professional offices, legal or, or medical. Um, back offices are allowed. Um, so you're talking now about central. Business. This is neighborhood business. Or neighborhood. Right. Takeout restaurants not allowed, um, and um, that's sort of the extent of the commercial. So on the central business side, um, not only is it scale of use and types of uses, you know, hotels, restaurants, offices, all of those um, uses in central business are allowed, but it's also the size of buildings. You're not limited to um, less than 10,000 square feet for um, building size, not that that would happen in central business. But the idea is really more about scale and limited commercial uses in neighborhood business. And in central business, it's very flexible. Um, 
Right, you still need permits for construction <laughs> and, you know, if you're changing the site layout, you still need to come to the planning board. If you're, you know, going up to um, certain, um, you know, if you're adding square footage, that all triggers planning board review. But your um, maximum build out to lot lines is allowed under neighborhood business. You have um, uh, setbacks and also um, parking is a big difference. You don't, you're, we don't require any parking for usage other than nightclubs. Um, but new uses like residential use and office use and other commercial space use doesn't trigger the requirement for adding parking in central business um, because it's really meant to be a place where you park once and walk. Is that why it was considered to change to CV and not to GV? I mean, because there's a, it's kind of, it seems when you look at the map, part, really more part of a general business shape. There's no other CV here except for this history you're saying of like constant. Right. Well, I think that goes to sort of where, what do we want to look for in the long term and how, what's going to, what makes sense. And if we do change and have a form-based code where we can treat different sections differently, then central business is the most flexible um, zone to allow for various types of uses and also intensity. So that's why we would recommend, that's why initially we were recommending central business instead of general business. But there's nothing, per, I mean, theoretically we could just change it to GB tonight or recommend that and then when the form base code is all figured out to so switch to CB at that point. Yeah. Wait, we can't, we, no, we can't both convert it to something that wants to advertise. Well, you can make so with it. Yeah. Yeah. They say yeah. to the city council that we recommend that you know, these areas, and then we're kind of punting it to them, but they'll hear the rationale, the discussion that we had, and then they'll get to say too, because they're the final decision makers on this. We aren't. They'll finally say. Will there be any more advertising or notice? for the city council hearing than for Yes, us. the city council hearing has to be advertised. But just through the public notice, right. just through the public agendas, I mean, every every uh, homeowner right. is not going to be notified of this if their property isn't being impacted. Right. right. There's no Gazette reporter here today, unfortunately. I don't know who's going to watch cable TV. <laughs> so they may or may not hear about it. So. You know, we have a couple options in front of us, and I think we do have to move forward so we can do these next ones. You know, we have, uh, we can say to the city council that we are not recommending this change from neighborhood business to central business um, because there are no clear um, guidelines or zoning to go along with it. We can say we are recommending this change and as long as the central business architecture design guidelines come along with it, two. Or three, we, uh, we recommend this change from neighborhood business to general business. Um, and I'm not sure what the guidelines are then if someone was to look at those properties. Um, but as per David's um, suggestion, they could still move I'm, forward. I'm not suggesting, I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm well, asking. but it's a compromise. Again, I think we're looking at all of these compromises at this point in order to keep the process going. Our fourth option would just to um, hold on these and say we're not ready, we're not prepared at this point to make any kind of recommendation to the city council on these, on the neighborhood business, the central business. Does, does the issue of the one property that was not included on the list raise any issues or would, is it possible, say we were approved these but there was the one that was mistaken and not included, that wouldn't mean we would have to go and talk about that next time, right? You would just, since it's a recommendation, we would just include that? Um, we'd have to advertise specifically for that property and send notice to the property owners mm -hmm. for that property to bring it in. So it would, um, depending on how this goes, if it can catch up and we can do public hearing at city council for it, we might be able to do it that way, um, but it might have to come in, you know, separately. Come here first and then go yeah. to city council. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, I would be more comfortable just revisiting the whole issue once the list is finalized correctly and then we could have a little more time to yeah. How much time did you need office? to post this to include that other missing property? Two weeks? Four it's weeks? It's two weeks, but uh, so, uh, um, 
I think it kind of depends on what your recommendation to council is because it could be this catches up um, or council might say well let's let's do a different zone or something like that in which case um, we have to evaluate whether being a less intense zone requires re-advertising or not. How does it catch up? I should explain how that would Well because if they if they want to continue the discussion then we can post again for the property that's left out of the you know, oh, catch up because of their delay, yeah. not yeah. because of something we do here. Yeah. <clears throat> You're saying there's a, there's a benefit to getting this in council earlier, the issue? Yeah. That's all right. That's I mean, unless for some reason you want to take time to, um, if you need more time and more information, then you can continue the hearing. If you don't need any more information, it's just a matter of deciding then I would recommend you just go ahead and make a recommendation to city council. Well, I don't know where we're individually going to get more information about this mm -hmm. if the public hearing is open and we can't really... Right. I, I mean, yeah. if you wanted more information to staff from staff to uh -huh. bring to you, yeah. then yeah. that would be a reason to hold it. I don't right. think there's a reason otherwise. Right. Sure the restaurant, the restaurant has been more to that it's not conforming to So to change the zoning to something that it is conforming, but it's still, because of the change of ownership, it still has to go back to these other boards to re-up the license. Is that correct? Yes. And then, when, whenever there's a change in ownership. Okay. So in that point, do the voters get notified for those for processes? Um, for the change of ownership? I think a license, yes, there are, is a better notification for licenses. So I guess if enough neighbors <clears throat> showed up and wanted the license, the license could be restricted as to hours and mm -hmm. nature of activities. Mm -hmm. Pass it on to them. We well, don't need to. That, they look at that. And no, that's well, going to happen regardless of our recommendation. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Um. We really, that's, at least for me speaking <coughs> for myself, my, my concern is more around the issues of hours of operation, nature of operation, impact on the neighbors, which might be more appropriate to deal with on a issuance of a license. Sound level. It's not about um, renovations to the building per se or the exteriors right. of the building or anything more. Right, but, right. and also this zoning change, you need to look at it as though you don't know who the owner is yeah, or what the yeah, use is because this is for establishing what could be allowed, the whole umbrella of things that are allowed in Central That's place. true, except the only reason we're seeing it tonight is because of who the owner is. That's what's pushing it sooner than otherwise. It's not, the they're not the generating, right. Was it right. You know, this does, for, again, we've been kind of talking at Carolyn in the office, has been doing a lot of work on the zone base. Um, we've only kind of looked at that, at pieces of our hearings. It could put a little flame under us to kind of spend some more time on this and help the planning office move forward on that zone base zone because of this. Um, which I think we should do regardless of our, our decision here tonight. More input? Just an observation. It would seem to me sort of strange that you would make a really substantial zoning change which is permanent and leave it to the license commission to catch an error. I mean licenses come, licenses go. You make this thing general business or central business, they're never going to change back. So I wouldn't leave it to the license commission to police a zoning change. That's a that's a little bit it's a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it's accurate to call it correcting an error. Um, okay. Well, I, I, thinking of the fact that there will be a further review of this both at the city council and in the issuance of licenses, I guess I would feel more comfortable approving the changes. Approving the changes without any tying into um, the downtown business, the, the central I, business. Uh, if, if it were tied into the 
Architectural Review Board, I would vote against it. All right. So there's a well-stated position. I don't want to do any spot zoning, and I don't feel comfortable having it move forward without having any design standards applied to it. So I would be in favor of it as long as it carried along central business architecture review. And I think at that point, that would give anybody who is now in central business could come back and participate in the public hearing process when and if form-based code comes forward and give their input to what they think those standards should be moving forward so they can fully participate in that process when it comes up. So it's not like they're just stuck with whatever we decide because there's a process designed to solicit their input at that point. But I, I would not vote for it if it doesn't have design standards to go along with it. I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. Okay, I'll go with that one. We we'll agree with, yeah, yeah. Good, good enough. And so we would not recommend it to City Council at this point because there are no... Unless it goes along mm -hmm. with, I would recommend it if and when it goes okay. along with Central Business. Is that a formal election? Uh, I no, I think we're just doing, yeah, we're just doing, yeah, we're just doing some informal straw. Bowling. Yeah, we're doing some yeah. informal okay. public. David, put you on the spot. I agree, I agree with that. I think none of these is a perfect solution, and I think it mirrors the imperfect nature of zoning that sometimes proceeds and sometimes follows yeah. real life use. I mean, right. this is the reality of living in a urban situation is you don't live on a Euclidean grid, you know? Yeah. And the reality is, with some of these noise things, there's many places in Northampton that are much quieter and there's a lot fewer in a quiet place. This is not the part of town to live in. Whether this use, specific use stays or not, which I don't, you know, so I don't think that's something to to base a full area of urban planning of, on. So um, it's it's close to the heart of downtown. It should be denser. And, 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 and I think the, the densification should be really more residential dense use rather than, we're not going to have 20 nightclubs next on top of each other. Downtowns are full of empty retail spaces. So I think we're talking about residential density here. So um, I would go forward and I, I agree that the imperfect architectural review is Better than, you know, and it's going to be revisited again. So I'm fine with that. Okay. And Yuri, I, I think I heard that you're okay yeah. with that. Yeah. Sure. That's good enough. Mr. Sam. Um, I I don't think they should be separated. So so we're moving. We would move them all forward together. I think what we're proposing at this point is move these forward and recommend to the city council. But that comes along with well, it. Yes, yes. Okay. Good. So then I think I can certainly be, go along with that also. So then we would need to hear a motion to close the public hearing. If we're ready to make the recommendation. Just on number two, we still have to go through three and four. I move to close the vote here. Second. <coughs> okay, any discussion on closing the public hearing? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? None? Okay. Uh, is there a motion then for uh, recommended language to our friends in City Council? I move to recommend to City Council to... Carolyn, do you re recommend approving it if when or denying it until? What's, what's easier for them to follow? Well, probably that you um, do not recommend that this be adopted at this time and because you think it needs to go with Central Business Architect. Okay, so I move that we recommend to City Council that we do not approve section 350-3.4 map change to rezone the list of parcels on Con Street from neighborhood businesses to central business um, for the reason that central business should come along with central business architecture review standards. And then the staff will explain to City Council that uh, the whole piece about the form is zoning. Now, if that could catch up, then, then we should remake this much more the minimum. Okay, uh, motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? One, two, three, four. All those opposed? One. All right. Thank you very much. So, is, uh, was that clear to the audience what the motion was? Can I ask a question? 
Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, so the, I think I understand. Well, let's see the public hearing. Yes. We can it's a answer question. a question. It's a question. It's not question. a statement. Yeah. So this is going to be carried forward with the architectural design piece. No. So it's up to the city council now to look at it and say, okay, do we want to recommend these zoning changes? Um, the planning board has said we don't want to recommend these unless there's some kind of um, downtown business guidelines that come along with it. But the city council on their own could say, well, we still want to recommend these regardless. Okay, so the so, next meeting then would be the March 9th March 9th. Meeting. That's, correct. thank you. Correct. We're only advising the city council of what we went through for the past hours. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Glad to have you back here. Thank you for being with us. Okay, now we're going to open up one. We're uh, looking at expanding the central business by rezoning a portion of uh, Map ID 388 on Old South Street and Clark Avenue. Your neighbors. Old South Street. Clark, right underneath the bridge. Clark, underneath. right under the bridge. Right. Okay. So, um, this actually, right, so the portions are actually from the edge of this parking lot here, okay. the Old South Street parking lot, into these three parcels that are on that, um, so where my cursor is, um, where are we? Oh, there we are, Roundhouse, there we are. Yeah, <laughs> yep, okay. right here. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, there's already a portion of those parcels, those These central three business. parcels here? Yes. Uh, you're looking at the backyards? Right. So these? It would just bring this line back further, basically right behind that houses. There. Three lots. Um, so I'm going to put a... Why would our logic be any different for... I mean, we just applied this... Didn't we just... What would, what would be different for these properties versus the guy who don't have audience? The other one was neighborhood <laughs> business, <laughs> essential <laughs> business, and this is essential URC, business. URC so urban residential. Yeah. Um, URC QRB. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, URC to, to central business. URC to central yeah, the other one was neighborhood business. This is yeah. yours. So, Carolyn, I'm a little confused. You said it was only going to take half of these lots? Um, right. The property owners? All the way to the back of the structures, basically. So who prompted this little? So the idea is... Um, the, I, the idea is to, uh, again, sort of expand central business where it makes sense to have more intense development and with access from the parking lot as the primary access to new development. Um, we are about to redo the parking lot, um, we, but we've been talking about this change for several years. And... Um, the idea is really, since these lots are very deep going from Old South Street to the parking lot, um, it's just more smaller development infill opportunities in downtown. And um, it's, yes, they'd be small footprints, but um, it, it, there was actually, one of the property owners was, um, had petitioned to get the courthouse built on these lots, the one that ended up at Atwood Drive, <laughs> um, and um, lost the bid for the suburban model of building out on Atwood Drive instead of downtown. Um, but sort of that was also, so that sort of generated more detailed evaluation of these lots and what the potential, the feasibility for development is. So it's really, there's no, pro there's no project in the works here, but it's um, after sort of hearing about that sort of design um, um, exercise, it um, it just made us think, why not allow that opportunity? Where so, someone is trying to sell this property right now with the notion that they have access to this driveway. Right. 
So, but that doesn't mean there's anything on. No, I know. They, they, yeah, they had been waiting for a long time to sell. They knew that this might be yeah. an option, but they didn't know how to market it. So yeah. these three of these three homeowners were all notified. Yes. But none of them are here tonight. No, they've all been part of the conversation. Yeah, for and months. they're all so we, we you know they're all agreeable to it. Yeah, so it's a great it's location. Yes, sure. Yeah, it, it is a great location, no doubt about it. Um, and again, what's the gross differences between um, Central Business and URC? So URC is primarily a multifamily residential district, mm -hmm. um, and Central Business is um, yes. mixed right. use, intense mixed and use, seventy foot heights. Um, you know, lot line to lot line. So there's no, is there retail allowed in URC? No. No retail. Mm -hmm. But that's why leaving URC on the residential side of the block, meaning the Clark Avenue side, makes sense. So that's going to remain residential fronting there, but the back side that backs yep. up to the parking lot would be commercial. Okay. So that's the difference between this and the previous one where we sent it back. Right. With Drawn for that we said we're saying that this we'd be okay with this because the we're allowing it in the back that's already connected to the city. I mean, I, I, I just want to be consistent right. from right. what we just we just said no to someone. So because this is going to central. Well, I mean, the same issue would arise as to whether or not this. You know the design standard should be applicable. I mean that that to me is I mean I, I, I mean I, I, I get yeah. that that's where I I guess I I'm gonna say that for we I feel like we just have to be consistent and the time. Yep. I mean there's no there's really no difference between this and the fact that there was a very strong speaker who was able to kind of to articulate that there was a problem. Yeah. And I, I think for consistency sake, the, I mean, we, the board, I, I would urge that the board say the exact same thing for all of these things until until such time as the, the uh, I mean. No, I, I think it's a different context there. What's the, what's the different no, context? I mean, that, that's what right. I'm trying to imagine. You have the right parking there, parking lot, right? Isn't the, the parking it in the end while you're having there? Yep. There's no woman who lives across the street. There's no abutters who are going to yeah, act yeah. in the same way. Well, but the concept is the same. There, I mean, this is, there's a much, there's actually a much more of an intact neighborhood closer to this one. Just, there's no abutters here because the abutters weren't notified, right? Right. Abutters aren't notified just the property owner. I, mean, I have a feeling if abutters were notified on this one, we would hear much more. Um, that's all the whole thing on Fruit Street. They just built that ugly house on, on the corner there. It, you know, I think that this is a neighborhood actually would, I'm not saying that's a reason to deny it. I'm just saying that but I those, think that's the reason is because of the those, those homes in front earlier. The, those homes in front of Fruit Street are not going to be impacted at all. That's still going to stay URC. Just the back lots that'll probably have egress to the parking lot. We're not changing the it, 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 no. it's change the entire lot. It's going to be a split lot. It's, it's, it's already a split lot. It is a split lot, and we just move the line so to can, the back of the existing uh, structure. Okay. So they could sell it. So we're right wouldn't. It's a split lot. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to the lot. Earth View? Back it up. So the the where's the line going? The CV that's already there. Then that is. Beholden to these existing the architectural review standards, right? We're just giving them more land so that they right. can do so something with it. We wouldn't be right. in this case; those would still apply because we're just moving the lines. Only so the, the, the first twenty feet would be applicable, and then the middle of the line <laughs> wouldn't be applicable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of right. course, it's all stuff that's visible from the street. They can have the a issue, mullet right? building. The parts that are visible in the parking lot. So no, it's over here. It's purple tree thing. Yeah, right here. Oh, uh, I'm going this way now. Yeah. 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 So it's these. Right one, here. two, three. three. One, two, so it, three. So the line would go back here. 
This is the Clark Street condominium. Come on, right back to the uh, right. uh, so Yeah, I think that's a good point. Right Architectural right. review applies to stuff that's visible from the public way primarily, right? I mean, uh, that's right. it. That's okay. the essence of it. All right, I could get behind and that. And that stuff is already in the zone, actually. Yeah. Okay. But it seems really weird to me to have a split part, but you have parcels that have th effectively three zones. No, no. Three yeah. different sets of standards. Two, two, two. Two. Well, but we'd be saying this is central business that's beholden to this part of the standard, but then this is central business that isn't? I actually don't understand why don't we have some guts and just put the whole thing in, in central business? Because there's some little houses. I mean, to I just don't understand. All, this, is such, this, this is the essence of spot zoning, I think. I mean, I mean let's just, this is supposed to be part of central business. There's these little houses. Let's make them part of central business if that's what they should be. Uh, it seems to me, I mean, there's a public housing residential here. I, mean, I, I think, don't know. I guess that's yeah. a question about the comprehensive plan. Yeah, I mean, I guess the idea really is that this is the, right now, this is the developable area. I mean, sure, if you went in and knocked down the houses, you'd have a whole parcel that was yeah. central business. On the other hand, this is a, it also represents a transition. Um, and if the back portion of the property is more intensely developed, um, it, can transition down to the rest if, of the... If you were looking at this from blank slate, you would say, huge parking lot, you know, public parking lot, let's put 70-foot buildings, the back of the lot along, what's this called, Old South Street? Transition down, like in the transect, you put townhouses or something, and give them access to the parking lot, but by doing it in a segmented way, like, there's no way for a developer to do that. So we're basically going to create an issue where there's going to be a fight down the road between these single family lots and they're going to say this is totally out of scale in the neighborhood because that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah. the reality is I think there should be taller buildings there. I mean, that's really what it should be. Not next to my house. Huh? What's don't up? be a nimby. <laughs> no, I think I mean, I'm happy with apartments by my house too. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I think the other piece is to think about and I you know, I don't disagree that long term if we're looking at, you know, taking that whole chunk um, for central business that might make sense. There's also that balance of trying to think about whether or not that is more of an inducement for someone to tear down those historic homes and do we is that okay? Mm -hmm. Or is that even happening? So, you know, I But it's already they're already URC, I guess, so if there was pressure development that could already theoretically happen, right? Yeah. So actually, well, not. actually, but they may be, well, these are deep lots. They can probably add more units. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but there's still a huge difference between URC and Central Business. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm basically not. we're saying Northampton needs to expand its Central Business and decrease around the, the rim of Central Business at URC. That's just the way that we need to move if we're going to stay viable, right? These, um, these lots are deep enough, though. I mean, what is it, 200 feet at least? They're deep. Yep. So, actually, they're two, 300 feet. Yeah, so this is so really deep. So if you wanted to do something like those those apartment buildings, what are those called? Called Clark Street? Or, no, not Clark. Uh, uh, the McDonald's those guys. guys. Uh, so. No, if you wanted to build something like that along Old South, after someone has already built a 70-foot high building, on the stuff we're talking about, you could still do that actually. If you, if, I mean, if you've got, yeah, you'd have to buy the lots and split them up in some way. Right. So I think geometrically it works in the URC. And right now they want 1.2 million dollars worth of it. But it would also work to your original point to rezone the whole lots to central business. Those homeowners then could sell off the back portion of it. But we would be doing a regular, a real zoning change. No, I was, I was for some reason because they're single family. I was thinking, I didn't. They're not compute family. that they were URC. They're, they're not single family. They're, they're not. Family. They're both. But they look like. They look like houses. If yes. the lots are that deep, what's wrong with bifurcating them, drawing? That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that seems. So so little odd having two two zones on one lot, but it seems to fit the uh, locations. Who drew that line there at 200 feet or whatever the... How, how, 
I wonder how that happens. Uh, does the homeowner we work decide? With the property owner. You work with the property owner, okay? Yeah. Say this is what I'd be willing to do, and this is how much later. Well, but and there's also thinking about what to, you know. We also have a buffer currently required between central business and uh -huh. residential districts, yeah. so taking into consideration that there needs to be some of that. So going as close to the homes makes sense, so that you can actually add back then a buffer. Um, mm -hmm. So there was not. It wasn't just. You know, taking a yeah. crayon across. But in ten years, it makes a lot of sense. In ten years, the next zoning board is going to be faced with now they're going to try to rezone the rest of South Street, Old South Street, into central business. No, you don't need to because you can already do a lot more residential density along that under the current zoning. Under URC, you could knock those down and rebuild them, assuming that it's sort of residential. But what if they wanted to do other kinds of commercial things? There's no, right. maybe. That's. Yeah. But I, so, do you want to circle back to this issue about whether the design guidelines should carry with this one too? Seems like they already do. Because of the front end, because of parking. I'm mean, assuming you're thinking that, that would they have an address? Is there a street back there? No. It would be an Old South Street. Would you have to have an entrance on Old South Street, or can you allow? No, them that would be. We we talked about having a, a consolidated shared entrance for all of those. From the parts. parking lot. Yeah. It's great. So they would they would have the central architect. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. it's there already with a Great, and it's done. So, so you call that Old South Street? That's not it's Clark street. Avenue. It's Old South, and then it forks off, so right but, here. Oh, the, the, the river used to go. Why is the old, old South Street? Right here, this little um, street is Clark, it goes, and it goes under, under the, the, yeah. This is Old South right here. Oh. So this address is Old South, these are oh. Clark, or this address is Old South. These two are Clark Ave. And what would the address be for that shared parking lot? That's a DBW question. There's no street there. back there. <laughs> I mean, well, it's a. I thought right. you guys I, 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 I moved the closed public's okay. comment. Second. Is that yeah. third? Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Yes. <laughs> okay. Is there a motion on this number three to move this location? From urban residential C to central yeah. business. I move to approve section 350 3.4 to expand central business by rezoning a portion of map ID 338A to. Sorry, these are 31D, not 38A. These are what? Yeah, 31D. That was an old one, yeah. It's 31D. 31D. What else am I saying right wrong? That's all wrong. Well, that, that's 31D, 222, 223, 224, fronting on Old South Street, Clark Ave from urban <coughs> residential C to central business. I second. Is there any more discussion? Just to be clear, we're proposing that we don't need to apply the same standard we did in the last time because the design standards already apply to the back, which would be the frontage, so it's fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. as I understand. Okay. So just to be clear, I'm 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 not going to vote in favor of this because I'm I'm taking with the notion that if we're going to resolve part of these lots, we should resolve the whole lot. That I think South Street is at, at very much going to be. We're going to get another petition to rezone the rest of those houses as central business. I'm happy to have the majority go along with it, but um, I I don't quite get it. I think this is. Kind of crazy zoning change. So, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? Yeah, Who knows? Raise our hand. Raise two. <laughs> all right. Good O. Now we're going to 23 Laurel Street. And we only have three minutes. <laughs> Until? Oh, that turns into a No, we've got a big item to do yet. Yeah. I respect the district college. <laughs> I feel like I'm a DC. Okay, Laurel Street. Um, so, Laurel Street? Uh, up at the here, I'll zoom over there. State Hospital. State Hospital. State Hospital. Got it. So, um, across, uh, behind Cole Morgan, basically. Oh. Um, so. Cole Morgan. Keo. Leo. No, now it's new. I forget. It's got a new name now. Yeah. Um, you know where that little church is? Thank God, Maduka's Church. No. On Chapel Street. Yeah, so here's yeah. Cole Morgan. Okay. And it's this lot here, proposed subdistrict C expansion. You see that? 
I'm going to zoom in. Here's Prince Street. Here's the um, DMH building. This is um, Grove Street that comes along here. Right Earl yeah. Street here. Those little dots right there, those brand new houses they built uh, in the last five yes. years. Look yep. Up. Yep. So this parcel was carved out uh, as part of the state hospital holdings um, and given to Mental Health, DMH. Housing Authority for the purposes of providing affordable housing could be to spe special populations. The mental health, the um, the other parcel down here, which is out of the state hospital, but also carved out, was for um, Department of Mental Services, or I can't remember what they're called now. But this has been built out, but that wasn't a part of the original plan village district. So the reason why this is. Um, a different shade is this is all in the Plan Village District, but this was specifically carved out um, and not part of the original special permit for redevelopment that Mass Development carried forward because Mass Development was only taking down the rest of the parcels, not this um, Housing Authority parcel. What happened was Housing Authority um, didn't do anything, didn't do anything, didn't do anything. So the state said we're taking the land back. It was so many years that they didn't build. Now, our housing authority is a little. No, yeah, they can do that. Uh, now the state. Now we're trying to essentially we want it back and to develop for affordable housing. So, but not to housing authority. It'll come to our office and then we'll put out an RFP. Um, so the idea, though, is to rezone this into um, the 40R overlay district, which is what we have on the north campus. And I'm going to just zoom up here. Um, the 40R allows essentially site plan review um, for um, development, and not a special permit. Um, and this, we already have subdistrict C here, subdistrict A, subdistrict B. Um, that was is under 40R. So not only is it locally planned village, but then there's this what's called a 40R overlay, which is a state designation that's basically an incentive for housing development. So the state, um, the reason why it's an incentive is the state wants to see that there's a, a clear path for approval for um, housing. 20% of the units have to be affordable in the district, and then. As housing units get built in those districts, if the state has approved your um, overlay, um, they will pay you X thousands of dollars per unit for every house that's built. And that's sort of their incentive to say, okay, we know that sometimes with higher density units, there are some ancillary impacts. Here's the money to address those impacts. And already we've used that money from development in the other subdistricts on the north to help fund this main street redesign, some traffic improvements, um, safety improvements coming in from um, South Street, but most of it's coming into the design of Main Street because um, we want to make that safer and that obviously affects um, all the users of the network and is related to sure. development. Of course. Right. So the state took it, the town wants to take it back, they want to develop it for low house, uh, low, no, uh, affordable, affordable. Housing, yep. affordable. Um, but, but in order to get the biggest bang for our buck, we need to accept this overlay so we get more inducement from the state. Right. And the density would be the same as what would be allowed under Plan Village anyway. But this is a, a little bit of a faster path because it's not part of the original special permit that was granted. So if we don't, there are a couple of ways the city could offer this for redevelopment. One is to just um, go and get a special permit that incorp that allows for the development of 20 units or 25 units on this property. Or, and, and then go through the, that would be under Plan Village. Um, or do a 40B filing, which is sort of a waiver of all zoning. Um, or do this 40R overlay that still requires site plan review by the planning board. Um, but has this incentive um, payback from the state um, if we develop units under that. So, um, you know, this has always been, 
it was never clear how many units were going to be built here. The planned village would allow this number of um, units anyway, but we feel like 40R makes the most sense because of that incentive from the state, and it still goes through planning board review. Um, but it's sort of the it's it's not it's a by right thing. You don't it's not doesn't require a special permit, um, and you don't have to they don't have to reopen that whole big special permit that was granted. So that's the part of the bigger plan village, like the acreage minimum, is all like part of that big development. Yeah. So you need to do 15 acres here. Right, 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 right. So um, was there any reason, not, is there any downside to doing this? Sounds like it's a no brainer. You know, uh, there's no downside from the city's perspective. I think the neighbors would might balk at the number of units that would be there. But that's allowed anyway under the planned village, um, and it just you know it's just been sitting idle there for 15, 20, 20 years I would say, yeah. 18 years. So you know they've gotten used to the fact that this is right. They're going to be mad when they you put one house on there. That's great. Uh, some. So none of those are voted. What's like, that? What density is allowed there? Or? So we don't have a maximum density at State Hospital. It's basically anybody can come in and propose a build out, right? So the city, so the city could do an RFP and just except for the fact that this wasn't under the overarching umbrella special permit that was granted for the build out. So it would have to come back and go through that special permit process. Having it a 40R means it just goes to site plan review. Could the city do that and then do an RFP? Like city kind of define kind of the balance of what they want? Sure. Do an RFP and do it that way too? Yeah. To take some risk out of it for the developers? Right. Well, the risk that we're taking out of it is setting it up for, but we also don't necessarily want to do the design piece. We want to have, you know, for the layout. For the but we can set up the parameters, you know, it needs to meet the Village Hill. We already have very um, specific criteria for Village Hill development in Village Hill that, you know, framing the street, their design guidelines, things yeah. like that. So, um, I'm mindful that none of the surrounding neighborhoods are aware of this going on, probably. Because they didn't have to be notified. Right, but we did contact the ward counselor. The ward counselor actually lives in this neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, we wanted to make sure she was yeah. aware, and she started the outreach process with okay. her the neighborhood. So, part of me says when we're going to make another recommendation to the city council on this one, that somehow we add a little a little rider that says some more extensive outreach needs to happen before. Their hearing on March 9th is that a month away, three weeks away? Probably is there necessary any? though. Huh? It's going to happen anyway. Yeah. yeah no, whenever. No, it only. But whenever the development comes through, then the the abutters are notified. This is merely adding an overlay, but the plan village already allows this type of development here, and so this is just adding another um, mechanism which then results in right. an incentive. But I still feel like all of these have been done really with a lack of people who changes are happening. So even as we just said, the people who've lived around here for the past 15 years have just accepted this nice wooded lot. But now they need to know that something is perfect. They, they don't know when something gets applied yeah. for. Well, why don't we let them know ahead of time? That. Well, but we reached out to the city councilor because that was important yeah. in this case. We can't assume who's going to want to be notified and who's not. Like, where do you draw the line? So we, we didn't can't. Have nothing would ever happen. I mean, and we're meeting the state requirements for notifications. Right. Right. Every change in planning and zoning had to go to all the abutters. Like, yeah. you never change anything ever because there's always going to be people who object. To well, just because someone's going to object doesn't mean we're not right. going to make changes. But oh, we have that, we have a time for public comment. It's like when there's an actual thing on the table to do. Yeah, but then the cart is already sometimes out of the out of the barn, and then they get to kind of say maybe that cart should stay in the barn. This property, huh? It's not their property. Just because they live near it. I mean, I mean. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's a very different viewpoint than I have. 
Um, I think the more transparency that we can do about these. But if we can't put city owned or state controlled or city owned property into a smart growth, a sustainable growth mm -hmm. district, like where would you ever put a sustainable growth district? Well, I'm, I'm not saying that. just this one here, but I think when we look at the long list of these, there's a pattern of, of butters or people in the area not knowing what's going on. Like the people who live next door to these parcels on the parking lot. They all of a sudden are going to wake up some morning to hear that something big is proposed back there. You know, and they haven't had an opportunity to kind of hear about that ahead of time. It's just going to drop in their lap. This one, the last one, I, I certainly see where we're coming from. I, but the people down here in this area of grocery, it's very different than the people who live up on Village Hill. Um, I just don't think that we've done uh, the, 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 our best effort in, in, in notifying the community of some of these changes. But you That's don't think all. that notifying the city councilor is doing that? I mean, presumably whoever it is there that She's brand new. She's been in office for about a month. I don't know if she has a newsletter. She didn't go around door to door and knock on people. She didn't. There's not even, I don't think, a... Uh, she was in my neighborhood knocking on door. <laughs> yeah, well, that was when she was running for election. Well, we don't put a postage sign at this lawn to say that this is up for zoning, did we? No. No. So there's no notification law. So again, maybe I'm just pissing into the wind, but I think we have to, too many of the times we've heard that, and sometimes rightfully so, that someone didn't hear about such and such happening in their neighborhood. And I think we need to. I guess I, guess I, I agree with, with David that, that this is just, at this, at this stage, this is just making it easier for a project to potentially get off the ground. And then, when when someone when an actual product is uh, is there, then someone can actually boy, come to us and voice their approval or disapproval. Yeah. I mean, I, there's enough roadblocks that exist. I think just make, making something a little easier. So on these here, what about the people who live right next door to these changes, but didn't know about it or live across this? That's street. I didn't care. You don't care about it? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you that, that, I mean, the one that we already voted on, like the World War II Club, I think there's a very good argument that people can feel that they were, their rights were not acknowledged or recognized, um, but if that's the statute. Uh, I guess they'll have to take it to the city council. Here is really? the true. To the state can help. You have to well, make it right. up. Well, no, I mean, when, when the council votes on it. Yeah. Um, here, th that's true. Before, th they'd have to get a, um, a site plan. Is that what would be needed? So people then would be notified. And yep. I mean, maybe one way to talk about this is what happens if we don't change the zone? You can still develop this. Right. It's just yeah, but not as advantageously. No, you can still get the same number of units. It's not as advantageous to the city because we wouldn't get right. inside of things. We wouldn't get state funding. funding. Right, right. And a site plan, and so there's a few more hoops to jump through on a site plan approved, I mean on a special permit and a site plan. So we are we are moving down a step from a site from a special permit to a site plan. But you know. Right. Um, so okay. So that was my soapbox moment. I know people want to go on. So is there uh, any more discussion on number four? No. On this? Motion to close public comment. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so moved. Unanimous. Is there a motion on a recommendation to the city council? I'm just Number four? four. A motion to approve the second three five. Or the other three five. 0-3.4 map change, 23 Laurel Street map, ID 388-49 from Planet Village to Planet Village. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With this micro overlay Village Hill dash C period. Subsection C. Yeah. Ah, they didn't say subsection yeah, C. Five right. seconds. Okay, any more discussion? On this recommendation of City Council, all those in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? Okay, unanimous. All right, real quickly, you guys still have a little bit of energy? No. A little bit of attention? No. no. Come on, no. I told my wife I'd be home at night. No. 
Yeah. 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 I know. No. How about we have this issue that all of you are familiar with? Carolyn sent us something up by email about this complaint about the open yeah. meeting law for Mr. Callahan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, um, let's just see. Should we whisper this? Oh. No, I think we're still. Um, sure. <laughs> so, um, the um, requirement, so there was a complaint filed that uh, there was not uh, enough detail given in the minutes about uh, Mr. Callahan's comments. Um, I'm just going to open this up here. Um, and um, so there's, there's 14 business days for the body that's been um, against which a claim is made about an open meeting law violation that minutes don't reflect the nature of the meeting, that the body has to respond to the um, uh, Attorney General. So that's why it's on the agenda, because you need to um, re respond to that. Um, right. Not on the agenda. So 14 days from the There is a revised agenda. Oh. Or that, um, as soon as we or, got this, yeah, we had to revise You got the first one, I think. Yeah, I did too. Other two different things. Okay. So um, 14 days from when the complaint was filed? Right. Mm -hmm. So that was Tuesday, I think it was filed. Um, but you're not going to. So, yeah, February 7th, actually. So it's been a week. I just got it this week. Um, so, yeah, the other thing that I sent to you was. A decision by the AG on a issue, a very similar issue in Charlemont. Um, and I had a conversation with the city solicitor. So the board really just needs to decide whether, I mean, there are basically three decisions. You determine the minutes accurately reflect the summary of the conversation. You determine that you want to add <coughs> any comment, and so you therefore amend the minutes. Um, and uh, um, and then you can decide how much amending of the minutes you want to do. Um, you actually have to wordsmith the minutes then, the amended minutes with you. Uh, right, or if you have um, sure. a, you know, if you wanted to. Little Enhance them at all? Yes, uh -huh. you can yep. just add yeah. a That's a good business that he's receiving notifications. He's not in the butter. Is that correct? No. He is in the butter. What? He's not in the butter. He's not um, a party of interest that's required to receive notice. However, he did receive notice because it's uh, we just use a computer to generate the list. We just do a quick buffer. It actually grabs more people. So he was in that list. He was in that list, uh -huh. and he came to the hearing. But he claims that he didn't get notification. But that was for a different project. Uh -huh. um, he's saying he didn't. Can, can I say something about this? I, I think there's no way that I mean we'd be here till midnight or later, really discussing the issues. I don't understand them. I was remember when he showed up. I remember the hearings. And I still don't understand them and how they relate. So I don't, but my question is what if, in fact, he said those things that he states in his complaint? What would be wrong with just saying, okay, we'll amend the minutes and include everything you stated? And get on with it. Do well, we or the alternative is if you think the minutes reflect essentially what he was saying, well, then you would say yeah. no, or you could say, you could add a few things. I think the danger of saying, okay, we'll amend it and put everything you wanted in there, okay. is that now you're yeah. saying the minutes have to be verbatim transcript no, of what people are saying. I don't think writing. so. And we're certainly not saying, the one thing we're absolutely not doing is saying he's right. Um, That's not what this is about. Yeah, right. It's just it's just about the minutes but and reflecting. If in fact he said what he claims to have said, then the minutes certainly did not come remotely close to representing what he said. 
I'm not being critical. I mean, there's no way you could have right. typed fast right. enough to include all that. Right. And but but, but I the don't law see how also doesn't say that you have no, to I, catch it. I understand. Anything. But rather, I, I don't. I have a hard time. If it, again he said those things, I have a hard time saying that the minutes reflected those those comments in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I don't. I, I, I just. It's without agreeing that anything he said was accurate. We could easily agree that he said those things. And and I don't. But yeah, I think it's. I think it's just not legitimate to say that the couple of sentences that were included in the minutes reflected the extensive comments that he claims to have made. How would we know if he said those things or not unless we went back and listened yeah. to the recording? Right. That's well, the, wasn't that the point. Recorded? I mean, yeah, I don't know, but but we also can't say he did. No, no, no. no. I get that you say you can't say he did, and I'm thinking to myself, I remember that night because it was like one of the very first. And I don't remember, I mean, I looked back, I remember when I went them out and I read them and I was like, yeah, that kind of depicts what I remember of the evening. But certainly there was things that were said at that podium that aren't yeah. verbatim in here. So then if you, you know, I don't know if it's like one of these things where you say to somebody who stands up at the podium, if you want any of your statements to be recorded in our minutes, you have to tell us. Because if not, Carolyn would be typing the whole time. Yeah, she wouldn't yeah, be listening. Right. Right. Or you'd have to re-listen to, God forbid, the five hours we've been here tonight and retype it in. So if, how do you do it so that you <clears throat> you don't set a precedence so that anybody that comes here, that, like David was up here tonight speaking, like, are you supposed to dictate everything? I mean, there's just no way if it later right. goes down the line and then he says, well, you didn't say what I said. And he was up here, well, I don't know how many times it was. You know what I mean? That's, that was my concern when I was like, I don't remember if he said it. I don't remember that he didn't say it. But if we shove it in here, do we set a precedence for the next zoning board? Or... Whatever he's doing and whatever legal things that I've signed or gotten from him or whatever, if we put something in these minutes that I can't remember him actually saying, are we now helping his case? I'm not trying not to help his case and I'm not trying to help his case. I just am not, I'm not comfortable adding anything that he said in his little diatribe into the minutes. I feel like the minutes are, you know, accurate enough as much as you can type. You know what I'm saying? I just, he's saying what he okay. said, but I don't remember him saying that, and I was here that night. So I'm not super comfortable saying, let's just copy and paste what he said, make him happy, put him in here, call it a day. Because I don't know how that's going to affect anything legal he has going down the line. That, that so then you are saying how Carolyn paraphrased it in the minutes is... For me, well, I'm good with it. Or you're okay with it. I'm okay. good with the way the minutes well, are. Yeah. And Yuri's okay with that, okay. Um, people who come to speak do have the opportunity to present their written testimony as part of the record. Well, that's right? true too, they right? Do that. Does um, that then get inputted into the minutes, Joe? So anything that's submitted, any document that's submitted for the record is just attached, or um, so it's not part of the minutes. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't then take that and enter yeah, it in. Yeah. It would just be C attachment. So, so but it could be found later. Yeah. Yep. And hit in the history. Yeah, so could that be yeah. the option that's just given to this guy? I mean, I think he did have <coughs> some sort of written. Some well, it's a little, no, it's too late yeah. now yeah. To, yeah. to go back and do that. It has to be in the okay. in yeah. moment. In the moment. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when you read what he says he says, and then you go back and read what is in the minutes, it's like, well, that's a pretty good way of summing up what he said he said, just without all the core details. The reality is the whole point of the videotape is that if you want to go back yeah. to the details, you can go to the videotape. I don't know, can we just attach this complaint to the minutes and saying after the minutes there was a complaint but we decided not to amend the minutes because they were accurate? Well, that's going to be that's, that's going to be the AG's office, so that's, that's, that's going to be there. part of the record. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I just don't think this we is pretty can, in good faith, right. say that the minutes reflect to any extent what he really said. And I, I don't think it will help or hurt us. I don't think it will affect it at all. 
He can say whatever he wants. It doesn't mean he's right or accurate. But yeah. So, but I, I there's even something here about that he didn't have enough time to prepare, so he's adding more information in the complaint. That's what he didn't say. You no, know, David, that's not saying that's correct. It just means he said it. He but can Alan, say in the complaint he's yeah. listing things that he didn't actually say. Well, at least that's how I read it. It's yeah. a little unclear. Um, um, how do we know he's, what he wrote in the complaint, all this verbiage, yeah. how do we know that he actually did say this? Well, well, that I'm not sure. That's right. what I so am. How, I don't know. If, if he said it, if he said those things, the minutes didn't reflect them. But how did they uh, so, uh, Okay, so how much a minute would reflect all these hours that are talked here? How much you need to do that? So, again, if he says so, those things. It's just like right. It's just, it's, no, right. But the just, standard in the, in the Attorney General's decision is that we, even if he did say all of this stuff, that the most he's going to get is one sentence or two sentences yeah. summarized. He's got two in here. And he's got a conspiracy thing and he's got a dense thing in here. No, I didn't say that. I don't think it said that. I didn't the that note out. from the from hey, hey. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it said that. That you can summarize, somebody talks for 20 minutes and you put in one or two sentences. I don't think the attorney general. I think it was that's what we're saying for tonight's meeting. But I, yeah. I mean, that's the minutes that we routinely approve have a one right. sentence. Yeah. That that is the local standard. Well, that's, that's the true. standard we're following. So, I mean, he, he said that. Well, I shouldn't say. This, this is also different because this is not also regarding anything that was before us. That you, it's not like there's right. some decision that we made oh, that was contingent on this meeting, right? Well, I, I don't think that's the case. issue. So let me, if I can, I think the issue is, and the, the AG says it, by substantial compliance, meaning compliance of recording minutes, we mean that the minutes should contain enough detail and accuracy so that a member of the public who did not attend the meeting could read the minutes and have a clear understanding of what occurred. So. Carolyn paraphrased a lot of his comments to say that Mr. Callahan um, remarked that the development was too dense. Um, that was a way of paraphrasing much of what he said about the number of units being proposed here. Um, so somebody, Joe Blow, who came in off the street and read the minutes and saw that he said that was too dense, would they then have the understanding that Mr. Callahan was opposed to the project for that reason? Yes, what dense means could be, you know, um, described in different ways. It wasn't specific about six units or nine units, but that he as an abutter was opposed to it because it was too dense. Well, it, um, it also talks in here how he talked about a conspiracy to secretly approve changes I since an adequate notice was not given. Yeah. So she yeah. gave him that one sentence too. And that right. was all the other thing that he didn't right. get notice. So, I mean, it's not like he wasn't mentioned in here on several occasions. I mean, it's clear that he's got problems with this development. And so, I mean, again, I don't know that you could paraphrase in complete detail every time someone gets yeah. up there. And yeah. There's just no yeah. way. I mean, I think, you know, if in the beginning, if we want to CYA for later, George, whoever's running the meeting, should say to somebody, if you have something you want, to make sure if it's in the minutes at a later right. date, um, hand it to us yeah. and we'll attach it, then, yeah. then that's so, a super clear thing. Like, we're not mm -hmm. being, you know, transcriptionists or whatever you call them. Like, if there's something that you absolutely want the general public to remember about your statement, write it down, write it down and hand it to us and we'll attach it. Right. Right. Not to do that. No, I think it's kind of Yeah, it all goes into the. Yeah, yeah, but I mean. Right. I mean, it's like redundant. I get it. But if if we want to keep this from ever coming back again and trying to be transparent, I mean, in theory, we could say in the beginning, if you have a public comment and you come up, I mean, we already basically say, please come up, state your name, state your address, blah, blah. And if you want something to be stated in the minutes, please write it down and hand it to us. You know what I mean? Like, let them be the bearer of having to give us what they feel is the most important thing Carolyn is supposed to hear. I also want to say that during that hearing, 12 people spoke about uh, the development, the application, um, and a lot of them, they're all 
comparable kind of paraphrasing mm -hmm. by um, Carolyn. Um, here's one. Um, Dave McCutcheon of Florence Rose raised Florence Road raised concern about a pond, fence, mosquitoes, and the ten affordable units. So it didn't go into all the detail about the pond and about the but and I think it's pretty consistent about the paraphrasing, yeah. which we're all, you know, probably up to the three minute limit of uh, public speaking. So So do we take a vote on what to do with this complaint? Let me just see exactly. Yes, you need to take a vote. Um, so we'll accept or reject? So we're filing a complaint. Instructions for the public body that receives the complaint. The chair must disseminate the complaint to the members. Um, did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, the body must meet to review the complaint. Um, after review, blah, 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 uh, the body must respond to the complaint in writing and must send the attorney general a copy of the complaint and a description of any action the public body is taking to address it. At the same time, the body must send the complainant a copy of its response. The public body may delegate its responsibility to its council or staff member, but only after it has met the review met to review the complaint. If the public body requires more time to review the complaint, it may request an extension for good cause by contacting the division of the government. Mm -hmm. So basically, we as a board need to develop a response to Mr. Callahan, um, and then give that to Carolyn and the attorney to put it into language that I think is appropriate to return to them. So we probably need to, to vote on <laughs> Um, some language that we're comfortable with, such that we feel that upon reviewing the minutes of the meeting and Mr. Callahan's um, written complaint, we feel that uh, the minutes were sufficient um, as described and were not, and voila. Or, um, we, after review, that we, we have uh, agreed to amend the minutes to state A, B, C, and D. So, those are kind of yeah, I don't think we can pick and choose. I think it's either say right. yes, we're no, happy we're with yeah. the minutes as prepared or we want to incorporate everything you said, one right. or the other. Right. Well, I would say I don't want to amend the minutes. That would be my vote for that. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you're taking yeah. a vote, like, nope. Nope. do you want to amend the minutes? My answer is no. And you can go around the room and if you want to amend yeah. the minutes, then figure out how you want to amend them. But I say we're good. Yeah, I'm good too. Sam, <coughs> Seems to me. Okay. Jenna, sorry, Alan. Okay, so then we will uh, our, we'll ask Carolyn and uh, Attorney Seawalt to say that the board reviewed the minutes, and we feel that the way that his comments were captured in the minutes by the staff was appropriate. Um, okay, so I think just for clarity, sake, mm -hmm. if someone could make a motion to that effect. And a second. motion to move. Just say so moved. So moved. Okay, moved. Okay. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Jenna. All those, any more discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. So that's well, your name. Does it by hand that we were discussing this time? <laughs>